It's homecoming in central Hendricks County, Danville in particular. It is a beautiful night for high school football throughout the state of Indiana. A big Sagamore Conference matchup between the Southmont Mounties and the Danville Warriors. Tonight's game is brought to you by Endeavor Communications. Internet speeds up to a gig. Learn more at weendeavor.com. Com. Tonight's game also brought to you by Werner Financial. From investments and planning for retirement to partnerships and tax strategy, Werner Financial does it all. And by York Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. We're not number one, you are. You're number one at York in Plainfield. Good evening, everybody. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the ISC Sports Network. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Masters Heating and Cooling for the pregame show, which brings you our first look of the game. Make Masters your first call for all of your heating and cooling needs because Masters gets you there faster. Call 866-824-HEAT or log on at Masters Heat cool.com when you need them coach needless to say a big game to look at here today as you size up these two opponents well, yeah no doubt I mean both teams uh, each have a, a one loss in the conference so uh, if they want to keep uh, uh, pace with Tri West they've got to get a win tonight so it's a it's a it's a big game uh, I think to set up for the rest of the year for the uh, the conference championship. It was a huge affair for Southmont just a season ago. They won for only the fifth time all time in this series, but they're also getting a fresh start with their quarterback this year, Nolan Boyer. Right, Nolan Boyer's coming in, and, and he missed uh, all of last season with a hip injury, had to have hip surgery, which uh, you, know, you think that's us old guys that have to go get our hips taken care of, but uh, he had that, and he's really having a good year, both rushing and throwing the football. Meanwhile, you take a look at Danville, 3-2 and two to start the season. They're coming off of a shutout against Tri-West just last week, but they also had to do it with a brand new quarterback in Carter Ward, who's in for Connor Sober. Yeah, and you know, Carter Ward is a freshman, played his first varsity game last week against Tri-West, and while they didn't put any points on the board, you know, Carter didn't play too badly, and so that game experience could be a, a good stepping stone for him this week versus the Mounties. Of course, the freshman Carter Ward coming into this contest. He's 21 of 37 with only 225 yards through the air. He's going to have a tall task against the Mounties here this evening. Of course, Coach, you've looked at both of these teams on game film. What are some of the big intricacies that really stand out between these two ball clubs when they match up with each other? Well, first, I think, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of physical play. Both offensive lines, I think, are very good, and I think that reflects, uh, especially in the numbers of uh, South Mount rushing the football and even though Danville had to replace a tremendous running back from last year you know they got this running back by committee thing but you know they can still can still run the football uh, both teams defensively are doing some good things as well they each have uh, some really good athletes uh, on defense you know Stephen Webb at linebacker for Danville he's only a junior leads the team in tackles of course we're going to talk a lot about Wyatt Woodall tonight uh, maybe as a running back but you know he's the leading tackler for the Southmont team on defense as well. Indeed he is. We have to take our first time out. When we come back, we will meet the officials as well as get right to kickoff, which is coming up next right here on the ISC Sports Network. Hi, I'm Jason Warner. And I'm Christy Calderon. At Warner Financial, our vision is to redefine what it means to partner with a financial institution. We bring together expertise and dedication with a relentless focus on your financial success. Our drive is to create a strategy that aligns your unique goals by crafting tailored financial solutions to guide you through life's milestones. Together, we'll navigate the complexities and turn financial challenges into opportunities. Reach out today for a no-cost consultation and experience the difference of partnering with Warner Financial. Food, shelter, fast Wi-Fi. It's all we really need. Good thing Endeavor has the fast, reliable internet it takes to power all the Wi-Fi hungry gadgets in your home all at once. With speeds up to 10 gig, get smooth HD streaming video, gaming, music, and surfing, all with no waiting, no buffering, no kidding. Call or click weendeavor.com and upgrade to Indiana's fastest internet today. Welcome back here to Danville High School, getting set for some Sagamore Conference football here on the ISC Sports Network alongside Dale Carlson. I'm Kurt Darling. The Southmont Mounties have taken their side of the football field this evening. 
as we pan over towards the TP, where the Warriors will be taking the field for the first time here this evening. Again, you take a look at this Danville squad under head coach Jamie Comer, his fourth year as the head coach of the Warriors. And coach, you look back at some of the history that he had in his first couple of seasons, he had a really good star coaching this program. Absolutely, and, and you know, I think the interesting thing is when you, you look at what he's done here, he's built numbers, which uh, before he got here, they really didn't have in the program, and they're close to you know, 100 players uh, uh, in the in the football program here now at Danville. And I think one of the things that impresses me, and this is after, you know, doing a couple of games last year for them and, and now this year, is the size that they have in their offensive and defensive line. They're spending some time in the weight room. He's doing a good job uh, with uh, that part of the program. And if you can win up front, you got a chance to win every game. Meanwhile, for Southmont, they are under the tutelage of Desson Hannum, who is in his 17th season as the head coach of the Mounties. He has gone up, he has gone down. He has done a lot of things, needless to say, but he has certainly has a really good pedigree moving forward. Let's go now to your keys to the game, coach, as we see how these two teams can be right. successful here this evening. Well, we already mentioned a little bit in the pregame show, but Wyatt Woodall, the all-everything running back for uh, the Southmont Mounties, he's a load. He can score from... Uh, you know, three yards out, he can score from 60 yards out. He's a tremendous, tremendous running back. Danville's got to find a way to, to stop Wyatt Woodall. Uh, whoever wins the turnover battle, I think, is going to go a long ways to winning this game. And I really think because of the freshman quarterback, Carter Ward, for the Danville Warriors, the Danville offensive line has got to really dominate. They've got to get positive yards rushing the football and take the pressure off of Carter Ward. Speaking of the Danville offensive line, one in particular that you see that pops out on that line is Evan Lawrence. He is a six foot seven, 255 pound senior. Coach, he was a tight end last year catching the ball. Now he's protecting Carter Ward's blind side. I know, and you know what? Last year when I did a couple of their games, I thought he had the potential to be a Division I tight end. Lo and behold, he goes and puts on 40 or 50 pounds. And now he's a Division I offensive lineman going to Indiana. So good for him, but, and, and, but I think that's indicative of what they've done here at Danville, especially with the linemen, with their weight training program, uh, is they've really sent out some very very, very good players on the offensive and defensive line since Coach Comer's been here. So the, cap the captains now meeting at midfield for the ceremonial coin toss. That will decide who will be getting the football first. Again, Danville coming off of a loss 21-0 to Tri-West, which has given the Bruins the outright lead in the Sagamore Conference coming into tonight. Meanwhile, Southmont and Danville, they're going to be fighting for the outright second position tonight and send the Sagamore Conference to at least try and keep pace with the Bruins going through the rest of the season. The Southmont Mounties coming off of a dominating win over Crawfordsville, 48 to 18. Southmont has won the toss and they will decline to the second half. So Danville will be getting the football first here. So coach, when you have that strategy in mind, what do you look for here from Danville on their opening drive? Well, you know, I think Danville's got to really try to, as, we, as, as I mentioned earlier, get their offensive line going, uh, get the running game going, take some pressure off of Carter Ward so that uh, uh, they can uh, get some positive yards, hopefully get on the field and, and get a score. You know, I think uh, Southmont's saying, hey, we're going to stop you. We're going to get the ball back and down to score. The officials for tonight's game are Eric Lowe as well as Mason Atha, Travis Horn, Rusty Lowe, and Paul Wren. Appreciative of them to be here tonight for this contest. Tonight's game is brought to you by Endeavor Communications, which is proud to be part of this local event and wish all of the athletes good luck during this competition. Together with our members, Endeavor Communications is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and offer services, visit us at weendeavor.com. It is a beautiful night here in Danville, to say the least. Temperatures comfortably in the upper 70s, no humidity, Coach. Needless to say, it doesn't feel like the first day of fall. Absolutely, it does not. But you know what? This is great football weather, not only for the players, but for the fans to be out here uh, in, a, in a nice 70-degree evening. Uh, at the end of September, first day of fall. Sagamore Conference rivalry right here in Danville. Southmont won this matchup a season ago, 28 to 14. Danville looking to get them back. Southmont has never won this game in back-to-back -back seasons. We're underway here in Danville. A bobbled kickoff 
right there by Danville's returner as they get it down the sideline and it is tackled out of bounds right there. A solid return right there for Danville. That is Teak Tanksley on the return and decent field position to start things off here for the Warriors. Yeah, Derek Fulford from uh, uh, Southmont had a chance to uh, make a play uh, inside the 30-yard line and talked about one of the best football names we've heard all year, Teak Tanksley. That was a nice return. He's one of the starters that you see there along with Carter Ward, Colton Mosley as well, going to be getting the nod at running back here this evening. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line here for Danville. Again, Carter Ward, the freshman, getting another start here this evening. And a nice throw to his receiver, caught close to a first down. That's Jace Scrafton getting the first catch right there. Yeah, good little play call. They went to fake the bubble screen to the outside and then came with the slant route right behind the safety who came up to try and make the tackle on the bubble. Nice safe pass for Carter. Get him off easy uh, with an easy throw, pitch and catch, and uh, a nice game. There are your starters on defense, again anchored by Wyatt Woodall, who is a star for this Southmont team on both offense and defense. Second down and a very short one here for Danville. The first run of the ball game, and needless to say, that does not go the way that they want as Sean Robinson is absolutely clobbered by Waylon Gomez, and that'll be a loss of a yard. There, uh, Danville ran a little G scheme where you have the play side right guard pulling to try and kick out, and unfortunately they missed the down block on the interior lineman. Got some penetration and uh, a TFL there for uh, for the Mounties. Big third down. Danville's got to maintain possession, I think, of the football here and get a first down. Fourth tackle for loss this season for Gomez. Third down and a long one. Pitch from Ward and a double reverse outside. Fires downfield wide open as Teak Tanksley, and he is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Danville. What a play by the Warriors. Some trickeration leads to a score. Oh, a little flea flicker right there, Kurt. What a way with a freshman quarterback, second start, a big game. And what do they do on third and short? They come out with a double reverse, toss the ball back, throw the flea flicker to tank. Very well executed. Southmont had no idea where the football was. What a great throw. You know, a lot of times that quarterback might throw the ball short. He might throw the ball long with Tanksley being that wide open. Carter put it right on the money and an early lead for Danville. That's a heck of a way for T. Tanksley to get his first touchdown catch of the season right there. That's amazing as fast as he is. That was his first one. Danville now lining up for the two-point conversion here. And they're going to go with Mosley right up the gut. And he does not quite get to the end zone, but still a heck of a play to start things off here for Danville. So we'll keep it right here on the ISC Sports Network. Tonight's game is brought to you by Indy Thunder, which are Indiana's premier beat baseball organization, which gives blind and visually impaired athletes a chance to compete at the national and international level. The Thunder have five-time World Series champs and are looking for sponsors, volunteers, and even players for 2024. Contact Darnell Booker at 317-370-7231, or you can watch the Thunder anytime by logging on to iscsportsnetwork.com. You know, Kurt, Bobby Bowden, the old Florida State coach, used to say, whenever we have those trick plays, the best thing to do is to run them before your opponent does. You don't necessarily think it's going to happen on the third play of the game, but what a call by the Danville coaching staff. And what does that do for the confidence of Carter Ward in particular? Again, a freshman getting thrown to the fire, he makes a huge play like that right out of the game. Well, you know, absolutely, and I think, you know, he had a nice, easy completion on his on the first play of the game, and then, of course, he hits the, 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 big, the big play, the home run on play three. He's got to be feeling good about himself, feeling good about what his offensive line is doing, and so that's a great start. You couldn't have scripted a better start for Carter Ward in this big game against Southmont. So now if you're Southmont you have the tall task of answering some pizzazz to kick off homecoming night right here for Danville. And back to return here at four. Southmont is Kyler McCandless and he doesn't get a whole lot of effort right there. In fact gets tackled inside his own 20 yard line. A good special teams play there by Danville. And some tough field position to start things off here for Nolan Boyer and the Southmont Mounties as we take a look at the starting lineup. Yeah, Sean Robinson uh, uh, got down there, almost made the play, uh, but he held up uh, the returner long enough for his buddies to come in there. And so now they've got uh, Southmont, you know, inside the 20-yard line. That's what you want to do on your, your kick coverage is make them start inside the 20. Again, Nolan Boyer getting his 
essentially his first full year of play here for Southpaw after he was supposed to be the starter a season ago, but he couldn't quite get going because of hip surgery. His hip looks good right here as he turns the corner on the keeper and a nice game for a first down out past the 40-yard line. Man, it's like a little dive there to uh, uh, to Woodall. You know, you've got the whole Danville defense keying on him, and then Boyer pulls it and picks up a nice big play. Great answer to the touchdown right there. 24 yards on that scamper right there for Boyer. So it's first down and 10 here at the 40-yard line here for Southmont. This time they hand it off to Woodall. He gets his first carry of what will certainly be many here tonight, and he picks up four. Yeah, that's what exactly what we thought Southmont would do. And I don't think they're going to let that long touchdown pass rattle them. They're going to stay within their game plan and just try and pound the ball. Starters here for Danville this evening, again anchored by Brayton Krager, as well as Trey Ross on that front line. But Stephen Webb, he is the leading tackler so far this season. He also has two interceptions. Second down and six. Woodall again on the carry. He tries to keep it cranking, and he's able to crank out at least a yard and a half on that carry. That's a great job by the uh, by the Danville defensive line, not getting pushed off the football. You can see their pad level is a little bit lower than the guys in the white jerseys, and they're able to hold Woodall to a to short gain. Uh, you know, Southmont, the way they rush the football, this could be four down territory for them, even in a game like this this early. If they can get some positive yards here and not get the first down, I could see them going for it on fourth. Southmont averaging 285 rushing yards per game this season. Third down. Woodall again turns the corner, gets the first down, leapfrogs over the defender and keeps going downfield. A flag on the play as he gets tackled at the 25-yard line. Yeah, we'll have to check the penalty. Uh, that's a that little G scheme that uh, Danville tried to run uh, on their uh, uh, second play of the game. Didn't get anything. Waylon Gomez, the pulling guard, came out, got a nice block, opened up a lane for Woodall, but looks like we're coming back here maybe with the penalty. This does not look good for Southmont here as you see the offense going back to close to the original line of scrimmage. We'll check the penalty here as there's a lot of dirty laundry here at laying on at this field here at Warrior Stadium. And that's certainly tough right there because that would have been a heck of a play to really get the get the gears moving for this offense yeah, here for Southmont. Absolutely, and I think they're going to mark the penalty off. I don't think it was at the uh, line of scrimmage. It looks like it was downfield a little bit, so I'll mark it off. So it's not going to be third and and unmanageable here uh, but you know again Nolan Boyer can he didn't have a lot of great passing stats but he still can throw the football and uh, this might be an opportunity to see his first throw of the game let's take and uh, so what it was a penalty downfield it's a spot foul so when all is said and done they only lose about four or five yards from the previous spot so it'll be third down and eight yeah, that must have been out of our camera reach because I didn't see anything on that uh, on the replay, but uh, we'll see if uh, Boyer decides to put one up in the air here on third and long. Go! Go! Again, Boyer, he's only thrown the ball 48 times this season, and he's going to go to the pass right here. Fires over the middle, and it's complete to his receiver, and they're going to say that it touched the ground going into his arms, and it falls incomplete as he was looking for Dylan Howell. Yeah, that ball was just uh, short-armed a little bit, put it into the turf. He had a wide-open receiver and a chance for a first down. This is a big defensive series here for Danville. Not only did they get the lead on the big play, but they get a stop, they're going to get the ball back. So the drive sputters here for Southmont, and they'll have to punt for the first time this evening. Aaron McMaster's handling the punting duties. He's also a wide receiver and free safety for this Mountie squad. Spiral takes a hop right into the hands of Tanksley, and he is absolutely throttled right there by the Mounties. That's Kale Chad on the initial hit, and that stops what would have been probably a decent gain right there by Tanksley. Now it's only at the 31-yard line. Yeah, great special teams tackle right there, but still Danville's got the ball in, in good field position at the 31-yard line, and, uh, you know, it's kind of hard. You, you drop those trick plays early. Now uh, Danville's going to have to really play some football here uh, to, to get some points on the board. Danville has to follow up some trickery that they had lead to a touchdown on their previous drive. Again, that was a 51-yard flea flicker, and now it's a bumbled snap 
and Carter Ward does the wise thing and just falls on top of it and takes the sack in the backfield. Yeah, I know that snap was a little bit high, but uh, kind of hit Carter in the face mask right there. He's got to make that play, but again, that's one of those things as a freshman. He's got his eyes. He's trying to look at coverage, trying to see what's happening downfield, and uh, just didn't execute the snap. Uh, the snap. They're trying to get the offensive tackle uh, out in front uh, to, to get, as you can see, shows pass. He's trying to go flat down the line of scrimmage. Uh, what you want to teach your offensive lineman to do right there is they got a little too far up the field. They've got to really go parallel down the line of scrimmage to be able to get to that defensive back, taking that step up the field, slowed him down, and allowed for the uh, tackle for loss. So third down and a mile here for Danville. Watch the screen, alert screen. Ward now rolling to his right. Has scrapped it along the sideline. He gets out to at least the original line of scrimmage, but he is still well short of a first down, and Danville will now have to punt for the first time tonight. Yeah, just nice safe uh, nice safe play for, uh, for Ward. Sprint him out to the outside. Good protection by the Danville offensive line, and take the easy play, pick up a few more yards. Hopefully with the punch, he can flip the field uh, a little bit. Uh, that actually was uh, probably a pretty good play call when you're third in the mile there. So out to punt here is Caden Collins, also a wide receiver. And he has a very decent punt. That'll be fielded here by Kyler McCandless. And he tries to shake off the initial tackle, but that was Robinson wrapping him up right at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Sean Robinson. Now that's uh, he almost had a great uh, special teams play earlier on the kick on the uh, the last punt and uh, did a nice job there making that tackle uh, as well. You know, sometimes Kurt, I think people say, well, you know, it's why didn't they throw the ball down the field? Why did they uh, make a bigger play on that? Well, when it's third and a mile, you, you want to try and get. If you pick up 12, 15 yards, that's great. You punt the ball another 30. You've picked up 45 yards in field position. You haven't turned the ball over, and you give your defense a chance. It's now Southmont. Going to try and get things moving here. Boyer again hands off to Woodall. He drops his shoulder. And it seems to me, Coach, that Woodall's bread and butter is certainly yards after contact. Yeah, absolutely. Aaron McMaster kind of came pretty free right there. But you watch McMaster's right there. See how he doesn't bring his feet with? His one knee goes to the ground. He makes the tackle, but Woodall still picks up four yards, keeps uh, the Mounties ahead of the sticks. So it's a gain of a very long three yards. Ball at the 43. Boyer again on the keeper this time, turns the corner, gets a first down, and is tackled just across the 45-yard line into plus territory. Uh, again, you know, when you have a triple option team like uh, Southmont is, that's a difficult thing to prepare for. Uh, you know, you've got to be very disciplined with your players up front. It looked like everybody attacked Woodall, which is want to let Woodall beat us, and then all of a sudden Boyer's around the corner, picks up the first down. 15 yards on that scamper, and another first down here for Southmont. Boyer again on the keeper. He goes the other direction this time. And look at him lowering, lowering his shoulder into the pads there of the defender, and he's close to a first down. You know, it's it's difficult. You know, we're not necessarily right in the heads of uh, the uh, the Danville uh, coaches right here. But again, trying to have a middle linebacker come across and take uh, Boyer on the option play, and he really doesn't have a chance to uh, to.
motion right here and then came with a little reverse play back the other way to the left and uh, Aiden Dickerson did a great job getting penetration and getting that TFL. Put Southmont behind the sticks, that's what you've got to do, uh, Danville's got to do in order to have a, an opportunity here tonight. That North Montgomery loss for Southmont was a 28 to 14 loss for them. Talking with Coach Hannum earlier this week, he said they really exposed a lot of their weak points that they've been able to try and correct going into the latter part of the season. Here's Boyer on the keeper again, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he is upended right at the marker, maybe gaining a yard on the play. You know, having, uh, Southmont's having a lot of success getting the ball um, to the outside, and you can see they're just not getting the linebackers scraping up over the top. Uh, that time, Stephen Webb got caught up with the down block of the wing, wing back and uh, opened up a, a, a slot for Boyer. Now, again, that was only five, six yards, but it gives Southmont an opportunity here in third and eight with the way they rush the football. You know, they can run the ball two times and get a first down. Third down and a short nine yards here for Southmont. Pitch this time goes out to Howell. He follows his blocker, turns the corner, gets across the marker, and that's good for a first down down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, Southmont came out in a little eye formation look. That's something that they do a lot of, and they were able to get the toss sweep again. Uh, Danville's not setting the edge with their with their defensive uh, defensive front. Their linebacker's a little slow, scraping over the top, and that allows uh, a 12-yard pickup. And you mentioned it, Coach, right there. This Southmont team, they know how to run the football even when they are faced in third and long situations. Oh, yeah. you, you know they're going to run the football in that situation and, and that they're going to go for it. And obviously uh, there they were able to pick up that first down. So the Mounties marching in the red zone. Here's Woodall again. He cranks it up the middle and sheds a plenty of tacklers, walks into the end zone. And Southmont knots it up at six points apiece. Yeah, Woodall shows you why he's such a dynamic runner because he can run through those arm tackles. He can make somebody miss and is able to, uh, you know, take a, a pretty much uncontested nine-yard stroll, you know, into the end zone. That's that G play. Uh, again, you saw Will Cody, the offensive guard, pull and kick out. Woodall got right inside his kickout block and was in the end zone. And now Southmont has a rare opportunity to take the lead on the PAT. Snap is down. It's a short kick, but it is enough to get it through the uprights, and it is good. 7-6 is your score. Southmont on top of Danville. Tonight's game is brought to you by York Automotive, which is also York Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Plainfield. Score a York deal on your next car, truck, or SUV and take advantage of their express lane service for quick oil changes and more. No appointment needed. Proudly serving Central Indiana. Stop at York and Plainfield today so they can show you why you are not, they are not number one, you are. You know, Kurt, something to watch for here. Uh, Danville, in fact, they might have actually got a hand on that extra point even though it went through. It's hard to tell, but uh, that could be key if uh, an extra point or field goal comes down to a fourth quarter here. Danville had great penetration. I mean, there had to be three defensive linemen, three black shirts, two hands up. Uh, they might get a block at some point. That could be a special teams play that could be a difference maker as the night goes on. Of course, as a coach, depending on who you have personnel-wise, what goes into that decision of whether or not going for a PAT or going for two, depending on what level you're coaching at? Because Danville, they've only attempted six point after touchdowns all season long. I, you know, I think it might be the kicker that they're they're concerned with. Uh, they just don't feel confident doing that, so they're going to try and pound them two pointer. Speaking of kickers, Tyler Petroski kicks it out of bounds here for Southmont, so that will bring the ball all the way back to the 40 yard line for Danville here to start things off on yeah. this next drive. Those are those things that drive you crazy as a coach when you just hook one out of bounds like that. That's kind of looked like my tee shot on the third hole yesterday when I hooked <laughs> it out of bounds. What'd you end up shooting, though? Oh, uh, yeah, and that wasn't good. It was pretty ugly. <laughs> so Danville will have a pretty good field position. They actually bring it back out to the 35-yard line off the penalty. So it's an extra free 15 yards for Danville to start off this next drive. Ward in the gun. And quick handoff to his running back. That is Mosley. And he plunges forward for a gain of three. Yeah, a little quick inside trap play. Uh, just trying to, again, try and get that off big offensive line moving 
for uh, Danville. Let them get and control the game here a little bit, uh, as we talked about earlier, and try and take some of the pressure off the of board. We only have two minutes left here in this first quarter, and that is Danville's first positive run of the evening. Ward gets it outside. Here's Tanksley, and he tries to turn it upfield, and he has enough for a first down getting close to midfield. Yeah, I like to call that the stick concept where you have just the inside receiver on a little hitch route. You have the uh, slot receiver on the shoot route. That's Tanksley. Uh, really good athlete, just trying to get him the ball out in space and a first down. Again, it's those easy throws for Carter Ward as the freshman to allow him to, uh, to have some success here. Ten-yard pass and catch right there to Tanksley. First down here for the Warriors. Up the gut this time. And a solid run right there by the Warriors. That's Mosley again. They ran that trap play again. A little bit different action in the backfield than the first play they ran on this series. You can see the good kick out. Great job uh, getting the down blocks by the Danville offensive line. And that's really, I think, what Danville needs to do is get those big off. by Wooten. Again, we're catching a little bit. Dylan Howell had an opportunity, I think, to make a tackle for no gain. But again, he's not driving his feet. Uh, got run over and uh, first down for Danville. So things went really well through the air here for Danville in the early going, now getting the ground game going. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, I, they probably wanted to try that, that flea flicker early, try and take some pressure off of Carter. And now, with uh, uh, even though they're, they're down by a point, get the outline going. Back to the pass here for Ward, and just behind Tanksley there as he was going on the post route inside, and it's incomplete. Yeah, I'm not so sure he didn't have one of the outside slants there uh, for a completion, but I get it. Tanksley is their best, then one of their best skill guys. He's the fastest guy out there trying to get him the football, and sometimes that's just a mistake that a, that a freshman quarterback uh, quarterback can make. One positive note on that right there, Coach. That's his first incompletion of the game coming in here late in the first quarter. Yeah, that's pretty good for a freshman too. Ward back to the air again, gets it outside on the wheel route to Tanksley and just a little bit out of his reach. So back to back incompletions right there for Ward will bring up third down. Yeah, just a little bubble screen, you know, and you think that that's a really easy throw to make, uh, but it's not with the receiver kind of moving parallel away from you. Uh, that takes a, takes a lot of practice and he's a freshman, so uh, probably hasn't had a chance to make, uh, you know, hundreds of those types of throws to Tanksley yet this year. Danville has to get to the 29-yard line to get the first down. Hand off this time to Wooten, and he's going to get that first down and actually stumbles himself, but still, he gets enough to keep the drive alive, alive a gain of 19 yards. Yeah, uh, Southmont kind of brought the house. When you decide to blitz like that in a rundown, and he breaks the line of scrimmage, there's nobody back, back there to make the tackle. Big first down picked up right there by Danville. Ward goes to the outside behind Tanksley, a nifty catch there by the little guy, and he has it out to about the 15-yard line. What a catch right there by Tanksley. That's a great catch, because again, it was that little stick and shoot combination, and uh, this time uh, Ward threw just a little bit behind him, but you can see Tanksley's athletic ability. Not only was he able to catch the ball, he was able to squirm forward, make somebody miss, and turn it into a really nice positive play, giving Danville second and about uh, maybe a long four. Coach Jamie Comer calling Comer Small, only five foot seven, but he is fast. He is a track sprinter in the spring for the Warriors. And Danville will be obliged to let the clock wind down to bring us to the end of quarter number one. Seven to six, Southmont on top of Danville by one. Second quarter coming at you next, right here on the ISC Sports Network. Well, 
Looking to keep your home comfortable year round? Look no further than Masters Heating and Cooling. Right now, you can save up to $2,599 on new system installations with zero down and up to 72 months financing. That's unbeatable value and unbeatable comfort. And if you're just looking to maintain your current home comfort system, we've got you covered with a $69 tune-up from Masters. Don't miss out. Both offers expire April 30th. Contact Masters Heating and Cooling today and experience the ultimate in home comfort. 7-6 here at Warrior Stadium in Danville. It's homecoming for Danville High School on the ISC Sports Network. Southmont leading the Warriors going to quarter number two. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, your thoughts on that first quarter? Well, you know, it was really, a good. I think, a very good first quarter. We saw we saw a big flea flicker play. We saw Southmont move the ball down the field, and we're seeing a freshman quarterback doing a pretty good job so far tonight. Speaking of that freshman quarterback, he looks towards the end zone, has his man reaching to the end zone. Touchdown, Danville. That is Jace Scrafton getting his fourth touchdown of the year. You know, there's a lot of traffic out there. Uh, Carter Ward's getting some pressure. There's a lot of bodies out there running around. He was able to thread the needle, put that throw out there. You know, Coach Comer said that in two or three years, we're going to be talking about Carter Ward as an all-state player. I think he's right. He's certainly playing like it so far. That is his second touchdown pass of the night. And that was good for about 16 yards to put Danville back up. And Danville's going to go for two here again, but uh, just what a great play by Carter Ward. So Danville once again going for two. They were unsuccessful the first time and looking towards the end zone again through the air, trying to hit the tight end, Trey Ross. And it doesn't go there. It remains 12 to seven. We'll watch this again here real quick here, Coach, as this is a heck of a throw here by the freshman. Yeah, you can see the little bit of levels. They're running three receivers at levels. You can see the white jerseys there. And just a perfect throw by Carter Ward. Uh, allows his receiver to catch the ball, turn up field, get in the end zone. And Danville's able to, uh, to take the lead 12-7. That red zone play brought to you by Werner Financial, a firm who utilizes customized investment solutions to meet your financial goals, from investments and planning to retirement, as well as partnerships and tax strategy. Werner Financial does it all. Call them today at 317-735-9202 to learn more about how you can secure your financial future. Well, Coach, I used to say it looks like we have a uh, the makings of a back and forth battle here tonight with how these two teams are moving the football. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, you know, we saw uh, we talked about in the opener, Danville's offensive line was able to uh, open up some holes. They were able to get some positive yards rushing. Carter Ward's, uh, you know, take making some easy throws. Yeah, he missed a, missed a couple in that drive, but he made the throw that counted. And so now uh, we'll see uh, Southmont. Uh, I think more importantly, how does Danville now? come back defensively to try and slow the Southmont uh, rushing attack down. Line drive kick. And it stays just in bounds, much to the dismay there of the returning staff for Southmont, and they get it back to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, Sean Robinson is all over the field special teams-wise. He was down there again and got another piece of that tackle. And again, you've got uh, Southmont put in tough field position. So Tay now taking over at the 21-yard line. Are the Mounties again? Boyer doing an excellent job managing this offense here for Southmont so far. He's the leading rusher on the night and has yet to complete a pass. They keep it on the ground this time as Woodall tries to turn it upfield but gets forward for maybe a yard on the play. Yeah, great, uh, great job. This time uh, Danville was able to scrape up over the top and not give Woodall that uh, running lane to get through there. They also set the edge a little bit better with their defensive end. Uh, was able to force Woodall back inside, and actually it looks like it might have been a, either a no gain or a slight TFL. Is there anything as a slight TFL? I don't know. I think it's either one or the other, I would say. <laughs> we have a flag on the play, though, and it's going to be an illegal shift before the snap. So that's going to be a five-yard penalty, which negates whatever slight TUFL would have been committed on that first play. And so now it'll be first and 15. Second penalty on the night here on Southmont. Yeah, 
Delayed handoff here. And again, a minimal gain this time for Southmont. That's Kale Chad. Yeah, a little quick counter play coming back the other way, and uh, Danville defense was uh, all over. And you can see they really didn't uh, pursue uh, the dive or the off tackle play to Woodall. Everybody stayed home. They played assignment football, and they were able to uh, make the play for, uh, for no gain. So still second down and long, but as you mentioned, Coach, this is still pretty manageable for them, given how they run the football. Uh, they, they do, and, and you know, and again, is, is the Danville defensive line, defensive front, they've really got to step up uh, and, and really be disciplined, keep their assignments, and, and, uh, and make plays here. Boyer on the quick handoff to Woodall, and he's able to at least get back across the original line of scrimmage. And he's out to the 23-yard line. Yeah, and you know now you're starting to see uh, Danville uh, not fall into their knees, not trying to grab. They're actually driving and trying to make uh, uh, good tackles here. And and again, you know, third down. This probably isn't four-down territory right here. Might be uh, seeing Boyer try to throw the football here on this uh, third third and nine. Boyer is 0 for 1 through the air so far tonight. It has been all running plays since then for the Mounties. Third down and long here for Southmont. Back to the air, here goes Boyer. He has time, a dart over the middle, and what a catch right there by Dylan Howell for a big first down, the first completion of the night for the Mounties. Yeah, I call that a glance. Uh, that's a five-step post route, and uh, even though the throw was just a little bit off target, that's a great catch right there, and a big first down uh, for the Mounties, uh, especially after being in that first in about 15. Uh, situation they found themselves in. 18 yards through the air and a first down for Southmont after they were in a pretty precarious position 60, to start 60, off this drive. Got a cheat to this. Man in motion, Woodall again, and he know he actually is a, he faked out everybody right there. The pitch outside to Howell, and he still is only able to get about three yards. That that fake fooled everybody there, Coach. Yeah, it did. We well, you know a, they're, they're a triple option team, so you're going to see that ball get uh, pulled. And when that ball gets pitched, what has to happen is your safety's got to, we say that, run the lane, run the alley to make that play. And Chance Denton did a great job for Danville. He ran the lane and was able to make a tackle for, a three -yard, uh, for only a three-yard gain. Second down and seven here for the Mounties. Pitch again outside, it is Chad. He tries to get upfield, he does. Gets a first down and just short of the 45 yard line. And it just ran that little uh, toss again, had a pulling guard out in front. And uh, again, we don't see a very good job here of uh, the linebackers from uh, Danville, you know, getting up over the top uh, to try and scrape and make that play. Those linebackers really A good athlete out there. Uh, you watch him here come off the fake, come off the play. Looks like we've got two black shirts that are having dead to rights, and he's able to scoot up the sideline and pick up uh, about five yards. This is a Southmont team that first started playing football back in 1971. Believe it or not, Coach, they went 10-0 and in their very first year. That's impressive. I mean, I started two college football programs, and we didn't go 10-0, and two of them combined in the first year. On the pitch again, Howell, and he gets tackled in the backfield for a loss. Yeah, that time he had great penetration by uh, Brandon, Brandon, ha Braden Hahn, I'm sorry, from Danville. I uh, was able to get upfield. He's right there. He's the first one on it, and then his buddies come in and, and clean it up. Uh, again, you know, it's third down here. Southmont runs the football. That's the thing that makes them so, so hard to prepare for. They could throw it here, or they could run the ball and then try and run it again for first down on, on fourth down. So, uh, it's a definite challenge for the Danville defense. Braden Hahn with another tackle for loss, his fifth of the year. He leads the defensive front four for Danville in that regard. And now a quick change of the play here for Boyer as the play clock's going to wind down and Southmont 
will have to call their first timeout of the ball game. Yeah, it tried to look like they're trying to do a little check with me, trying to see what Danville was going to line up in, but uh, play clock uh, started to run down, hit the call timeout. So while we have a moment, Endeavor Communications is proud to be part of this local event and wish all the athletes good luck during this competition. Together with our members, Endeavor Communications is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and services we offer, visit us at weendeavor.com. So if you're head coach Der Desson Hannum right now, what are you telling your team here in this huddle? Well, you know, I'm looking and, and I'm thinking, what what is what have we done that really has gotten us to the point to be four and one? And that's being able to run the football. You know, and I'm gonna say to I'm gonna say to my guys, you know what, we are gonna run the football here. If we don't get the first down, we're gonna run it again and we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get a first down. So I, I think it's kind of that old adage, you know, dance with who brung you, but uh, we're gonna still try and play physical football here against Danville. Fresh play clock here as Southmont faces another third down and long. Boyer trips in the backfield. Looks like he had one of his O linemen step on his foot as he was trying to make his cut. And Southmont gets back, goes backwards again, and it's fourth down. Yeah, trying to run a, a little. You see, you bring the wing back in motion. And then they fake uh, uh, to the to the left with it, and then Boyer's going to carry the football out. Again, a little bit of misdirection, even though you're running the option play, but uh, Danville was all over it. That's a great defensive stop for Danville. So, yeah, on that defensive stop for Danville, that's pretty imperative given how this game was kind of teetering back and forth in that first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. So McCandless is back to punt the ball away again for the Mounties. This time he has a much better punt. He gets that inside the 20. It's touched. That might be a live ball. It's picked up by, South, by Southmont, it appears. We'll wait for the call from the officials. It's a long, and it is recovered by Southmont. What a turn of events right there on special teams as the Danville returner, Teak Tanksley, touches the ball, making it live, and Southmont is right there for the recovery. Yeah, Tank Tanksley uh, just was just not a, a very smart play. When you see a punt returner having to run that far up to field a punt, those are those ones that you just kind of got to say, okay, let it bounce. If they pin us inside the 10-yard line, that's great. If it goes in the end zone, maybe we get a touchback. Uh, that, unfortunately, was a poor decision by Tank that now gives Southmont Great field position. First down and goal here for Southmont. Handoff is to Woodall. He has been a little quiet here of late. That's his first carry of the second quarter, believe it or not. And that goes for a minimal game. Yeah, I think, you know, we've got uh, the Danville defense uh, starting to step up. Of course, they're keying, you know, on, uh, you know, on Woodall. Uh, that was a very, very nice play. Uh, by uh, by Danville right there to uh, hold them to a, a little, little gain. That was a very pivotal play for Southmont after coming up short to get that first down. Woodall again goes to the right side and he lumbers his way inside the five yard line before he's tackled close to the goal line. Yeah, I mean, we were down in, inside the, the 10 yard line. I think the game plan is to give the ball to Woodall. You can see that G scheme right there. Nice, uh, nice kick out block by Will Cody, the offensive guard, you know, puts uh, uh, Dan, or, uh, Southmont on about the two yard line. So Southmont threatening once again in the red zone. Right up the gut, and Woodall punches it in for another touchdown, it appears anyway. No, they're going to say he was short. It certainly looked like with how much momentum he had there, Coach, he was going to punch it through. Yeah, it sure did, and when he when he got up, he was laying over the white line with the, the ball over it. I'm not, I guess they're saying his knee was down before the ball got over. It's hard to see where the ball is right there, but the official's right on it, and you could see his knee was definitely down. So uh, we'll say that was a good call there by the by the far side official. Great camera work there by John Chapman on the camera tonight, as well as Greg Mash, our producer, doing an excellent job bringing us this ball game here this evening. Here is Woodall, and they get a timeout call before the snap by Danville. So that will be their first timeout of the evening. Yeah, when uh, you could see uh, Southmont came really quick out of the huddle right there, they're going to try and quick snap it before Danville's uh, lineman could get set up and. 
uh, pretty much they, they did, but uh, uh, Danville was likely to get the timeout called in there uh, and uh, you know at least get a chance to regroup right here and maybe get a stop here in fourth down. There you see Jamie Comer standing on the left side of the huddle right there for Danville again in his fourth season as the head coach of Danville. He was an assistant at Western Boone before coming to Danville. He was also a standout linebacker at Brownsburg High School back in the day before going on to be a solid player at the University of Indianapolis. Well, again, if I'm uh, if I'm uh, uh, Danville, of course, I'm looking for uh, Woodall to get the football. But, you know, if I'm Southmont, he's our guy. Give him the football again one more time. Just try and, and get in that wedge blocking where they just get shoulder to shoulder, get lower than the black shirts, and get a touchdown. Fourth down and goal. Woodall lowers his head. He's in this time. Touchdown, Southmont. Again, just that little wedge, that little wedge blocking play. Just trying to get everybody shoulder to shoulder, get lower than the defense, and uh, get Woodall in the end zone for a touchdown. So now Southmont again can keep the lead here for the time being as they're up 13-12 now. PAT pending. You know, Danville actually got a pretty good push there. It's just that Woodall was able to find that little opening to get himself into the end zone. That really wasn't a bad, bad push by the Danville defensive line. Woodall with his 15th touchdown of the season. Snap is down, and the PAT is low, but through the uprights and good. We'll take a timeout back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network. Irritated by your internet provider? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with the E-Force high-speed internet. Download speed? No problem. Download an HD movie in seconds with our remarkable gigabit speed. Endeavor not only provides the latest fiber optic technology, we're okay. also here to help you use it. We also provide television, wireless, security, and telephone services with outstanding local support. Give us a call. Visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications. Technology for real people. We are teeter-tottering here at midfield here on the ISC Sports Network as Southmont has the lead back up on Danville in this Sagamore Conference matchup. Alongside Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Here's the return for Danville, this time by Chance Denton, and he's able to get it back to across the 30-yard line. Yeah, that was a really nice play by uh, uh, Tylen uh, Dynas uh, coming down on special teams, fought off a block, was able to make a tackle. If, uh, he doesn't make that play. Uh, Danville's up the sideline with the, with the big return. So now Danville again having to play from behind. Keepers widen a little bit. Keepers widen a little bit. Keepers widen a little bit. Still, it's been an exciting ball game so far. We had some trickery at the start. And now Danville trying to keep the momentum rolling on their side as Tanksley will get it on the jet sweep. And he goes forward for maybe a yard before he is absolutely crushed. There by the, uh, oh, the defensive line of Southmont, Will Cody on the tackle. Yeah, Will Cody did a nice job uh, fighting off the reach block there. Again, Will Cody doesn't uh, get off that block and make that tackle. That's not going to be a three-yard gain. That's probably going to be a first down. Second down and seven yards here for Danville. Ward hesitates, goes to the outside, and that broken play ends up as a first down. Way to think on your feet right there for the freshman. Yeah, really nice job. And, you know, Ward, uh, they're trying to throw again a little slant, a uh, little slant uh, shoot route to the, uh, to the field that they've had success on. And uh, it wasn't there. It was covered, and Ward pulled it down, and nobody was uh, home containing the quarterback on the backside by Southmont. He's able to get a first down. 10-yard pickup right there by Ward gives Danville 46 yards on the ground so far tonight. They have 106 through the air. Here is Wooten right up the gut. 
And a solid gain of about six yards. Yeah, uh, Danville has uh, run this trap play now a few times tonight, and they were able to uh, get a good kickout block there. Wooten does a nice job allowing that trap block to get the kick out. He gets in right behind it and is able to pick up uh, six yards. And again, with the freshman quarterback, you like to be in second and four. You like these situations uh, with Ward in there as your QB. Inside of three and a half to go in the first half. Fumbled snap again. That's the second one tonight. And that'll be a loss of four. Yeah, that one was a little low on outside, though, unfortunately. Uh, and I think it was a good job by, by Ward to just get down and, and get that football. Unfortunately, it puts him behind now in third and nine. When you have a new quarterback coming up here with a veteran center like Braden Shelley, what kind of chemistry is there when it comes to just as something as simple as snapping the football? Yeah, well, if it was underneath center, that's one thing. But a shotgun snap is a shotgun snap, and that was just a bad one. Third down and nine. Ward has scrapped it. He's been busy tonight, and he lunges forward to get the first down. That was a great throw by, by Carter Ward. He threw the ball to the outside number to the sideline, and uh, that allowed uh, the Danville receiver to catch that football. You can see the ball's to the outside. Now he can turn and run through that arm tackle by the defender. Yeah, just running the bubble screen right here. Um, well, I take that back. They were running the slant in the screen, and uh, Ward decided to throw the ball in the bubble. I think he might have been able to hang in there for a slant route. With Snook coming up from the corner that fast, one of those slant routes was open. I think Ward just missed it. Snook, only a sophomore, already getting meaningful minutes. Second down and long here. Ward pumps and goes outside, and they're going to say that was intercepted. A big grab right along the sideline there by Aaron McMasters keeps his feet in bounds, and we have our first turnover of the ball game. Yeah, but McMasters does a nice job going up, high point in the football, and let's see if he got his feet inside. You know, I think you know Ward's trying to get the ball up over his head, and probably he got one. Got one. Probably was not a good decision on that throw right there. Uh, with uh, McMaster sitting right in front of his receiver. Might have wanted to tuck that one down and just uh, run with it. But those are those mistakes uh, of, a, of a freshman quarterback, and now we'll see the turnovers. Obviously, we had the muff punt back there, too, which led to a score. And so, you know, when you have a freshman quarterback, turnovers like that can really hurt, and now we'll see if Southmont can take the ball down and score. So I stand corrected. They're the second turnover of the ball game, both of them committed by Danville. So Southmont takes over at their own 35-yard line. Boyer with a dart trying to get it outside to Chad, but he wasn't even looking for the ball there. Maybe a miscommunication as it'll bring up second down. Yeah, Southmont really likes to, to fake the toss here and come off with a post route and then the wheel route right there. And uh, post route was covered, and I think really Boyer just did a good job of saying, hey, I'm going to cut my losses, I'm going to throw it behind him, and we'll live for, a, you know, for another down. That's one of those things you always want your quarterback to understand is not to force throws in like Ward just did the play before. You know, sometimes it's best to just, just take your medicine, throw it away, scramble, get whatever you can get, make it a positive play, and then go for the next down. Play clock winding down here for Southmont. They get it on the jet sweep outside it to McCandless, and he tries to turn it upfield, and he comes away with two yards. Yeah, good job uh, again by the... Uh, Danville defense trying to set the edge. There's a little penetration right off the outside, which uh, forced uh, the jet sweep to go a little bit wide, and then that allowed Stephen Webb to come in and make the play, and now we got third and long for Southmont. Again, this is a team that averages eight and a half yards per carry, Coach. Their last six carries on the ground have gone for five yards or less. Yeah, Danville's defense has really made some nice adjustments since that first drive. Here's Boyer. Goes to the outside. He's going to tuck it and run. He gets a lot more than five yards that time, and he gets forward for the first down. Yeah, you know, again, that's what, uh, you know, again, I, I, you don't want to uh, kind of beat a dead horse here on Ward. I Web to the sticks and get the first down, but more importantly, get out of bounds and stop the clock with a minute left. That's a gain of 11 yards and a key first down here with one minute left to go in this first half. 
neither team has scored on back-to-back -back drives. It has gone back and forth so far in this one. And that pass goes nowhere. It looked like he was maybe looking for Woodall there on the screen, and that falls to the turf. Yeah, it definitely is a screen call, and uh, Danville was kind of all over that. They had pressure built on Boyer, and somebody was uh, sitting out in the middle of the screen, forced him to just throw it away. Another second down and long here for Southmont. Fifty-seven seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Boyer pitches it outside this time to Howell. He turns it up the middle, and he is close to a first down. It looks like he's right at the marker. Yeah, they're going to give him a first down. Again, just that little uh, toss sweep, student body right, getting a lot of white jerseys out in front. And again, you know, Danville, uh, on a few of those plays earlier, was able to get some penetration, able to slow slow the ball carrier down but unfortunately this time they weren't able to do that and probably a very strategic timeout right there they're going to say he was short by maybe a half a yard and that will stop the clock here for the Mounties so again you see those Danville black jerseys it's the first time they've ever worn the black jerseys then we take a look at the first half again that was a heck of a way to start this game, Coach. Yeah, what a what a great, uh, again, we said this at the start, but what a great play call right there to, to go with the flea flicker and get that big touchdown. And then Woodall followed that up with a touchdown run of his own from about 16 yards out. Southmont would take the 7-6 to six lead right there off of that score. And then a heck of a throw by the freshman quarterback to Scrafton for the second time tonight finding him. Danville goes up, but then Woodall able to use that big body of his to push through a mountain of players and that is where we are scoring wise right now 14 to 12. Yeah but you know I, I think you know we talked we talked a little bit about this at the at the beginning you know the Danville offensive line has really been playing very very well they've done a good job trying to take the pressure off of, uh, of Ward and now Danville's got to come up big here because you know that that Southmont's gonna gonna still try to pound the football even in this situation they're gonna have to uh, to come up big here now of course they're getting in the gun they're showing a passing look here uh, so let's see what they dial up here on this third and short. This is a big third and short play here for both squads. Here's Boyer, pump fakes, and now we have a flag, but they blow the play dead. And we'll see what the call is here. It looks like it's going to be a false start against Southmont. Now, you know when Southmont comes out in the shotgun, they're, they're probably going to throw the football. They're trying to they put the formation into the boundary, uh, tried to get the one-on-one -on -one to the field. They went with the double move with the hitch and go out there. Uh, to, the, to the left, and unfortunately, they got caught with the uh, with the illegal procedure here. This is going to be an interesting call here if you're Southmont. You know, am I going to throw the football here? Uh, I've only got you know 49.2 left. You know, uh, probably need to try and get our passing game rolling here a little bit. And again, they're in the gun, so I'm assuming they're going to pass. Ball just this side of midfield. Third down and six. Again, another pump fake. Now firing over the left side, and that is way out of reach there by Kyler McCandless. Looks like the throw was going one way, and McCandless was going another. Yeah, I'm really kind of surprised they tried to go back to the double move. They gave him a little bit different formation. They, they faked the bubble screen out to the outside, but you could see Danville was, uh, was not going to allow them to throw the ball deep. They were going to give them the, the little short throw, and if they got the first down, they weren't going to allow with that uh, double move down the field. But now here's where you see where the penalty really comes into play, Coach instead of what would have been a fourth down and one if that pass was incomplete. It's now fourth down and six, and you likely have to punt. Yeah, absolutely. Illegal procedures, those, those dumb penalties you just hate to have. And McMasters just barely gets that punt off. Tanksley fumbles it again, and we'll see who comes up with it. Another muffed punt, and who came away with it? It is Southmont, the second recovered fumbled punt of the night goes in favor of the Mounties. Yeah. What a play. That's uh, that's tough. You know, Danville went after a punt block here. They had everybody coming, and that's where you really want your punt returner to make a play. Unfortunately, uh, as you look like it, uh, Tanksley had his switchy coach a punt returner to do, get your hands together, catch the ball in your hands. His hands were apart as he ran up. The ball hit his chest and then, and then came out. Uh, elbows, hands together, catch the punt, didn't do it, turnover again. That is now three turnovers lost here by Danville. Here's Boyer. He rolls to the outside. Flag on the play. 
and he gets rid of it and it goes out of play out of play and we will check the penalty here it will appear coach that this might be a holding call here on South Mon. yeah where the flag is you would think it's a holding call uh, they again they want that fake toss and tried to run that post wheel combination to the to the left side this time and Danville's doing a really good job covering that post wheel combination they know that's their favorite combination and uh, so far uh, they haven't let uh, uh, South Mon let Boyer have an opportunity to find an open receiver Talking about the turnovers here, Coach, as the hold is confirmed right there by the officiating crew. I remember talking with Coach Comer last year before they took on Monrovia in what would eventually be the end of their season in the sectional championship. One thing that really they struggled with through the latter half of the season was turning the ball over. It seems that might still be a little bit of the case here this season. Well, it sure is tonight right now. And, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, your freshman quarterback might make some mistakes, try to force a throw in there, which he did. But catching punts, you've got your, your guy back there, your, your top receiver. He's got to be able to make those plays. Southmont has just this side of 30 seconds to work with here as Boyer goes right up the middle, gets free to the outside, and he'll run out of, out of bounds to stop the clock. And what was a broken play, he ends up getting a big gain. But, Coach, we have a flag on the play here right at about the 38-yard line. I don't know if it's going to be a hold. It might be a, a chop block. I'm not quite sure what they called there. But, you know, Boyer, oh, they're calling it, looks like they're going against uh, Danville. It's going to be against Danville. Oh, it's a face mask against Danville. So that's going to be a personal foul. And I believe, Coach, that goes from the end of the run unless they take the penalty, in which case it's 15 yards from the previous spot and a first down. Actually, not quite a first down as the penalty, as the yardage doesn't exactly equate to the first down, but still, Southmont going to elect to take the penalty here and keep the down, which will make it now first. Because that play was first down, so that, that was just first, down. Be first down with the 15 yards. Uh, that's a good play by Boyer, though, stepping up when he had the pass rush. And that's what you want your quarterback to do when he gets to rush, step up in the pocket. And now Danville going to take a timeout of their own. And that will be their second timeout here of the half. You know, Boyer showed why he's a senior quarterback right there uh, with the pass rush. He was able to step up, uh, avoid uh, a tackle, and then pick up some positive yards on that play. So now if you're Coach Comer in this huddle, he's standing on the outside right now. But if you're the coaching staff, what are you telling Danville right now? Because that's definitely a hard pill to swallow right there with that second missed punt right there. Yeah, it is. But you know what? You have to play the next play. I think that's the biggest thing that you talk about is no matter what happens, uh, whatever happened before, you can't control it. So you have to go out and have to play the next play. And he needs 11 black jerseys doing their assignment the best that they can to try and keep Southmont out of the end zone. So just play the next play, play the next play, play the next play. So officially first down and seven right here. You know, Southmont could still run the football in here. They do have two timeouts. So they don't have to throw it uh, every down if they elect to do it. 21 seconds to work with here for Southmont. Boyer. Losing time, fires, and nobody home as he was trying to get it over the middle to Chad right towards the post. Yeah, Southmont's having a hard time on the drop back pass protection here right now. You can see, uh, you know, right there uh, from uh, uh, Trey Ross does a great job defeating this block, puts pressure, and forces uh, an errant throw on the post route. And, and again, I'm going to go back to it. They've got two timeouts. They've got a great running back, a great running quarterback. And you know, we might see them try to run the football in here and then just uh, call a quick timeout. Southmont is four of five through the air tonight for just 18 yards. They've done the bulk of their offense on the ground, as you might expect. And now we have a flag in the defensive backfield. Time ran out. And time ran out. So that is going to be a delay of game which will back them up five yards to make it second down and 12. And you just got to wonder if there's a little discussion over there and what kind of play, what are we going to do? And uh, obviously we're going to get a timeout here, I think, from Southmont trying to settle themselves down here and uh, trying to figure out that plan here for the next uh, 17 seconds. So Southmont now will call their second timeout here of this first half. Again, Danville, they are certainly a... Historic program to say the least. They began playing organized football back in 
1941. They joined the Sagamore Conference in 1999. They have an overall program record of 511 wins. Their winningest coach in history, Bob Copeland, who was 153 and 44 in his time here at Danville. They had 15 winning seasons between 1989 and 2005. Yeah, Coach Copeland was, a, was an outstanding high school football coach, tried to recruit his players uh, many times in my stops, you know, through Indiana, you know, at that uh, at that time frame. And, you know, interesting thing is, you know, Sagamore Conference is going to break up after this, uh, after this season, Indeed which is, is. kind of sad because I, I think there's some very, very good football teams uh, in this league, and it's always been very competitive. Of course, it'll be soon. The bulk of the conference is not expected to leave until at least 2025, so we're expected to have at least one more full Sagamore Conference season before things change up here on the west side of Indianapolis. Here's Boyer out of the timeout, looking towards the end zone in traffic and just out of the reach of Kyler McCandless. Yeah, it's very good, uh, very good coverage right there on the, on the skinny post route, and uh, Boyer had no choice but just to throw that one out of bounds. So that's another incomplete pass. Five of six now passing tonight is Southmont. You know, I'm going to go back to it again. They still have a timeout. It was only 12.9 seconds to go, but um, you know, you, you could potentially still run the football call timeout and then see what happens after that. Boyer on third down. He directs some traffic. He unloads, and again out of the reach of his receiver. Again, McCandless can't bring it in. Yeah. I, I, Danville's doing a great job trying to just take away those those deep throws uh, for uh, for Southmont. You can see right here they're just trying to go with the uh, corner routes on both sides with a little hitch route underneath. And of course they scramble, and I just don't think Boyer saw to the back side that he had his outside receiver coming back across the field. And you know, when we taught the scramble drill, we would always teach those those backside receivers to try and run into the quarterback's vision. And I think part of that issue right there was that receiver was going deep to the end zone, not trying to get across the field. That was McMasters who was open on the other side of the field. Fourth down and seven. And now a whistle and the final timeout going to be taken here by Danville. Yeah, I think trying to play a little cat and mouse here, look at the formation, try and see what... Uh, what Southmont uh, is, is going to do from a formation standpoint. My guess is Danville's pretty uh, uh, got their their tendencies formationally down, and so trying to see what they lined up in there to try and get into the right defensive call. Uh, they spent that last time out. Again, just looking at this series between these two squads, Southmont has only beaten Danville five times ever. Danville has beaten Southmont 22 times over the last 35 years. But last season, Southmont was able to get one up on Danville, 28 to 14. But the interesting thing about that coach is that Southmont has never been able to win back-to-back -back seasons against Danville. Yeah, that's interesting. And I know obviously they have the lead here right now by a couple of points, and, and we'll have to see what happens here at the end of the half. But uh, Danville is certainly hanging in there tough, uh, even though they've, uh, they've got a freshman quarterback running their offense. So it's taken us about six or seven minutes to get this one playoff here between penalties and timeouts. We'll finally get it here. Fourth down and seven. Boyer with some time. Has a man. That's McMasters. And he gets absolutely pelted as he can't quite get control. It falls incomplete. And it's a turnover on down. Yeah, so uh, uh, Southmont loves that post-wheel combination. This time they ran a curl with it. Uh, Danville was deep trying to play the deep post. And uh, McMasters was open. But a very nice hit. And... Uh, Save the touchdown. That brings us to the end of the half. It has been a competitive one to say the least. 14 to 12, Southmont on top of Danville. Halftime coming at you next right here on the ISC Sports Network. It's game time at your Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Plainfield. Save thousands during Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days. Get a new Jeep Compass, lease it, just $2.99 a month. A new Jeep Grand Cherokee, lease it, just $3.59 a month. Or score a new Ram 1500, lease it, just $3.49 a month. Start your deal at YorkCDJROfPlainfield.com. We're not number one. You are. You're number one at York. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. 
Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. Representing the senior class are Hayden Collins, Isaac Cook, Evan Moritz, Zach Waits, Micah Baxter, Maya French, Sydney Ward, and Lily Warner. The freshman class prince is Carter Ward. The freshman class princess is Charlie McGrath. The sophomore class prince is Drew Bowman. And your 2023 homecoming queen is Micah Baxter. Now for our class flow competition. 
Fourth place goes to the freshmen. Third place goes to the seniors. Second place goes to the juniors. And first place goes to the sophomores. Thank you, Emma. The ISC Sports Network is your home for sports content across the Hoosier State. Find us live on TV and streaming or archived on our website and our app. The ISC is your one-stop shop for the content you want to see, including high school sports, college sports, and other great events throughout the year. Subscribe to our streaming service and get access to it all. ISC, local lives here. Looking to keep your home comfortable year-round? Look no further than Masters Heating and Cooling. Right now, you can save up to $2,599 on new system installations with zero down and up to 72 months financing. That's unbeatable value and unbeatable comfort. And if you're just looking to maintain your current home comfort system, we've got you covered with a $69 tune-up from Masters. Don't miss out. Both offers expire April 30th. Contact Masters Heating and Cooling today and experience the ultimate in home comfort. High school on homecoming night on the ISC Sports Network. Today's halftime show is brought to you by Ertl and Company. Benefit solutions, log on to ertlandcompany.com to find out more. And by Masters Heating and Cooling. Masters gets there faster. 866-824-HEAT for more information. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, that was a competitive first half, to say the least, with a lot of breaks falling into the laps on both sides of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we had a great start uh, to the ball game with the flea flicker, and then you saw really what I think both teams want to try and do is establish the run, and then uh, obviously uh, uh, Danville's going to throw the ball a little bit more, and Carter Ward uh, had a couple of miscues in there, but also made some very nice plays, and uh, we've got ourselves a tight two-point ball game. Of course, one of the big things that stands out on my stat sheet, Coach, three turnovers by Danville, two of them, those muff punts. Yeah, and we talked about that at the top of the game, uh, or at the top in terms of keys to the game was turnovers. And I think any time you get teams that are evenly matched, uh, you know, and, and especially with Danville having a freshman quarterback, the last thing they want to do is turn the ball over, and they've turned it over three times. So, you know, they've gotten a couple of stops on defense, uh, uh, held uh, Southmont, but uh, they're going to have to obviously clean up their act, protect the football, and then I think we'll try to force some turnovers uh, on Southmont. And in talking about Southmont going into the latter part of that second quarter, it was pretty baffling, Coach, that Wyatt Woodall, by my unofficial count, only touched the ball four or five times. They went to the air a lot on that final drive. Yeah, they did, and, and again, you know, it's it's easy to second guess when we're sitting up here with uh, with with the headsets on and watching, but uh, with the timeouts that they had uh, they, and, and the way that they're able, I mean, they're averaging eight yards a carry, something like that. Uh, they could uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, have run the football maybe a little bit in there, try to keep uh, Danville off off. Uh, off kilter a little bit. Needless to say, though, Nolan Boyer, in spite of the fact that he missed the entire season last year, he's been doing a heck of a job at least managing the game, to say the least. But Carter Ward on the other side for Danville, he's had a, he only had, he has an interception tonight, but still he's had some several good passes. He has 114 yards through the air. Yeah, he's done a he's done a really really nice job, and and Carter Ward is uh, is going to be. Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to get any taller, but uh, he's going to be. Uh, uh, a player that's going to be uh, somebody to reckon with as a quarterback for Danville High School going through you know, his career here uh, for the next three and a half years. We'll take a look at some highlights at the other end of this timeout. It's halftime here at Danville on the ISC Sports Network. I'm Jason Werner of Werner Financial. If you're a business owner or high income earner here in the Indianapolis area, 
Have you ever wondered if you're making the most of every available tax deduction and strategy? Werner Financial is excited to announce our continued partnership with tax consulting firm Strategic Navigators Inc., a team of skilled professionals dedicated to helping you navigate the complexities of the tax code. Strategic Navigators will guide you through the tax code to save you money each year on your tax bill. Contact us today and let's embark on a journey to optimize your business's financial health. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa, from last to fast, and wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash, stream videos at blazing speeds, and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. It's game time at your Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Plainfield. Save thousands during Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days. Get a new Jeep Compass, lease it, just $2.99 a month. A new Jeep Grand Cherokee, lease it, just $3.59 a month. Or score a new Ram 1500, lease it, just $3.49 a month. Start your deal at yorkcdjroplainfield.com. We're not number one. You are. You're number one at York. The ISC Sports Network is your home for sports content across the Hoosier State. Find us live on TV and streaming or archived on our website and our app. The ISC is your one-stop shop for the content you want to see, including high school sports, college sports, and other great events throughout the year. Subscribe to our streaming service and get access to it all. ISC, local lives here. Irritated by your internet provider? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with eForce High Speed Internet. Download speed? No problem. Download an HD movie in seconds with our remarkable gigabit speed. Endeavor not only provides the latest fiber optic technology, we're also here to help you use it. We also provide television, wireless security, and telephone services with outstanding local support. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. The marching band of Danville High School giving a solid performance here tonight at halftime on the ISC Sports Network as Danville trails Southmont 14 to 12 alongside Dale Carlson. I'm Kurt Darling, coach. Let's take a look at some halftime stats here. And we already kind of riffed on a little bit of these in the first half, but we get a little bit more in depth right here, coach. Again, solid night rushing the ball, to say the least, as expected for Southmont. Yeah, I mean, Southmont wants to, to run the football, and, and they've already done a nice job, 169 yards uh, uh, rushing. You know, I think the thing that stands out is, is the pass yards. While they're not a passing team, we know Boyer can throw the football a little bit, but Danville's done a nice job taking away those deep threats, those big plays, uh, and, and I think that's that's kind of stifled the, the uh, Mounties offense here a little bit in the first half. And even though Southmont doesn't have any sacks to speak of so far here this evening, they have gotten into the backfield. They have several tackles for loss as well. Yeah, absolutely, and, and they're doing a very nice job, uh, you know, a very nice job of that. Uh, I think uh, if, if I'm Southmont, you know, again, we want to dance with who brung you. We've got that old coaching cliche out there. But it's Woodall, it's Boyer running the football. I would expect to see that in the second half. So now, obviously, you see that from the second half. But for as far as Danville is concerned, and if your head coach, Jamie Comer, what do you tell your team to just kind of shore up on those turnovers? Because, again, we talked about that at the, at the end of the half, is the fact that that was kind of a problem with their team last year, and they seem to be still dealing with that a little bit here this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a decision thing. It's a technique thing. You know, unfortunately, the, the two muffed uh, punt returns, which were probably the two most uh, egregious uh, of the two turnovers, uh, could have been prevented. It's just a better decision making. And again, as I, as I said, when, when it happened, just a little bit better technique in terms of, of catching a punt. So if I'm in there, I'm just reminding, I'm reminding Tank when I'm catching a punt, if I don't think I can get it, let it go. And uh, when I do come up and get it, get my elbows and my hands together so the ball doesn't hit my chest and hits my arms. One thing I want to talk about here before we get to our final timeout of the half is the fact that we mentioned this a little bit here, Coach, conference realignment coming up here in a couple years for the Sagamore Conference to get people a little bit more familiar with what the situation is. Tri-West, Danville, and Lebanon are likely to stay in what is the Sagamore Conference. Then you have Southmont, North Montgomery, Western Boone, Frankfurt, and Crawfordsville all wanting to 
go a separate direction as far as a conference is concerned. I talked with both coaches about this this week, and basically the nutshell of it is Dan Danville, Tri-West, and Lebanon are growing to the point where they are becoming top perennial powers in 4A. Meanwhile, Southmont, Frankfurt, and the other teams, they aren't exactly able to get that kind of growth to keep pace. So they're starting to become a little bit of a disparity there, which is why they are basically said, and the coach Hannum put it this way, it was inevitable that this conference would, as we know it, would be breaking up. Sure, soon. and uh, you just have to look geographically. You know, Liston and Danville uh, and Lebanon, just, you know, Lebanon where they're in Boone County, close to Carmel, close to Whitestown, close to, to uh, Zionsville. There's just a lot of growth going out that way. So naturally, that the Lebanon is going to grow. And the same thing coming out here west. Uh, from Indianapolis, Liston, which, you know, and Danville, which were kind of small little sleepy towns, are starting to grow up, and so the schools are getting bigger, and, and, and so, you know, their opportunity to step up to 4A and play at a little bit higher level. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We'll take one more timeout when we come back. We'll take a look at highlights of that first half and get right into the second half. Stick with us right here on the ISC Sports Network. Fall means football, and on the ISC, we've got you covered all season long. Catch our broadcast live on television on Miami TV 23 and Comcast 81, as well as streaming on ISCSportsNetwork.com. With a subscription to ISC for only $4.99 a month, you get access to our entire library, viewable anytime, anywhere, on our website or on the ISC app. Don't miss a single broadcast. ISC Sports Network. Football lives here. Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one car, two bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym so insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with the two car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. A few minutes left here of halftime before we get going with the second half on the ISC Sports Network. Alongside Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, let's look at some halftime stats, or rather some halftime highlights, to say the least. We already looked at the stats here. This was a heck of a game and a heck of a way to kick things off. I know. The start, start the flea flicker. We've got a double reverse, toss it back to the quarterback, throw the ball down the field, completely caught uh, Southmont uh, off guard. And again, with a freshman quarterback in his second start, why not let him go with the flea flicker and get a big play? Still, Southmont was able to move the ball downfield efficiently off of that play with Nolan Boyer leading the way rushing here for yeah. Southmont. You know, Boyer, the, you can Woodall, you can Woodall, and Boyer pulls it and goes. And then again, we can see there in the second play because he's such a, such an explosive uh, a runner. Uh, and, and again, that makes it very tough on the defense. Again, Boyer was the heart of that first drive here for Southmont. But still, Woodall... Got plenty of looks as well as Howell, who had a big run here to set up what would eventually be the next sequence of plays to get into the end zone. Here is Wyatt Woodall, shaking and baking, getting in for the first touch. Yeah, but the play before that one was a little toss sweep out of the eye, and then they just gave it to uh, to Woodall on that little G play that they like to run. A little bit different formational look in the eye formation, and they really get the ball in the end zone. But then Danville, they were able to move the ball through the air again with freshman quarterback Carter Ward. 114 yards in that first half. They were also able to get at least a little bit of a ground game going, but still they were able to move the ball down the field, which would eventually be another score here and then get back up 12 to 7. Yeah, it's critical for that big Danville offensive line to get pushed to uh, take some pressure off of Carter. Of course, there's just a great catch by Tank on that little shoot route uh, to keep the drive going. And then to start the second quarter on that same drive, Scrapton gets his second touchdown of the night. Yeah, very nice throw by uh, Carter Ward, uh, kind of threading the needle there to Scrapton to get the touchdown. Here was what one of the only passes that Southmont was able to complete. In fact, that's the only pass they've been able to complete. That was good for 18 yards. Other than that, it's been mostly on the ground here, which what would be their second scoring drive of the night. 
Yeah, and then, I mean, that's what Southmont wants to do. They want to run the football. But, again, here's really the key for the night right here. It's three Danville turnovers. That was the first one on the muff punt. And it was just a poor decision. Uh, Tank should just let that ball uh, bounce and, and just live with where, where it ended up. And then Woodall goes in close, setting up what would be his second rushing touchdown of the night right here on this play. Yeah, actually, Danville defensive line uh, did get a pretty good push there. But when you're at the one-inch line, you're as powerful as Woodall is, you're going to score. Still, Danville wasn't quite out of it. They kept moving the ball here, especially with Ward with a broken play run right there on the ground. Still, the Warriors were able to keep moving the ball. Scrapton getting a first down there, but an interception would be looming. Yeah, that's one of those plays where I think Carter either should have thrown it away or just uh, ran, ran with that one. But you got to give the Danville defense credit. They stiffened up. They did not allow uh, Southmont to score, even though they drove down. And we can see here another big play by Boyer. Uh, they kept him out of the end zone. But then it would hit again. Another muff punt recovered by Southmont. It's rare you get two of those in one game. I know. You just, uh, you just hope that uh, he can shake that off and come back and uh, play a little bit better here in the, in the third quarter. But that's a great hit there uh, to keep Southmont out of the end zone and in the half. So now we get going with the second half, which is brought to you by Endeavor Communications. Internet speeds up to a gig. Learn more at weendeavor.com. Also, Werner Financial, from investments in planning for retirement to partnerships and tax strategy, Werner Financial does it all. And by York Automotive. We're not number one, you are. You are number one at York in Plainfield. So Danville will have to kick the ball away here as Southmont deferred to the second half. And believe it or not, Coach, this is where a coin toss can really play a pivotal role in the game right here. Southmont has the lead going into the half, and now they can try and add to that lead here on this first drive. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why you want to defer because you want to know where you are to start the second half. And uh, obviously Southmont's up, and they have a chance now to, to increase their lead if they can march the ball down and score. Again, these two teams trying to keep pace with TriWest in the Sagamore Conference here in this matchup. We're underway here in this second half. And it's going to be a short return right there for Southmont as they get it back close to the 20-yard line. That was Howell on the return. Boy, if Danville gives a special teams player the game uh, uh, award away each week, uh, uh, Robinson ought to get it because he has just covered punts, covered kicks. He's doing a great job in special teams. So Southmont will start deep in their own territory. We'll see what they decided to do here as they did not run the ball as, they, as much as they usually do in that second quarter. They're going to stick to the ground immediately with Woodall, and he barrels forward for a solid gain of five. Yeah, that's what you want to see uh, if you're Southmont is you want to get positive yards, get Woodall going. You know, five yards, five yards, but you keep doing that over and over and over again, and then pretty soon Boyer's going to pull it and be around the edge. Woodall, the second leading rusher here so far tonight. Boyer only has him outdone by just a little bit. Those are two dynamic football players that Southmont have. I'm sure they're going to rely on them a lot here in the second half. Again, they give it off to Woodall. And he's met right at the line of scrimmage there by one of the linebacking core of Danville. And he kind of wins that battle right there. He's close to a first down, about a yard shy, third down and one. I mean, Woodall gets those shoulder pads and all that momentum going forward. And he's very, very difficult to tackle. And, you know, especially if, uh, if as you as a defender, kind of stand up and let Woodall get into your chest like that, you're going to get driven back. Gain of four. As Southmont tries to keep the drive moving. Delayed handoff to Woodall, and he... Falls forward for a gain and a first down. Yeah, they almost had him for a tackle for a loss there. Unfortunately, again, it was uh, it was the arm tackles. Uh, Trey Ross had an opportunity right here to make a play, and you can see he tries to arm tackle. He's a little bit too high. Woodall cuts up underneath him and gets the first down. Again, Trey Ross is a big man in his own right, six foot five, two hundred ten pounds. Starting tight end on the offense here for Danville, also at the defensive end spot. Pitch this time to the outside to Chad. And he goes nowhere on that one. Danville read that play like a book. 
Nice tackle there for Danville. Yeah, we talked about setting the edge again, and you can see right here, trying to double team the defensive end, but uh, uh, not able to, uh, to do that. And then that allows uh, Stephen Webb to get over the top from his linebacker spot to scrape and make that play and get a TFL. Also had Porter Prather in on that as well. Prather crowned the freshman prince at homecoming during the halftime period. So that's a big loss on the play. It'll be second down and 15. Boyer has to scramble, tries to pitch it ahead. Instead, just has to go for himself and maybe is able to scratch out just a few yards on the play. You know, again, Danville defense uh, doing a very nice job right there. They tried to run, you know, fake the little uh, counter play back to the, to the left, and then Boyer keeps it going outside. And, and again, uh, Troy Ross is right there. Uh, is able to uh, hold Boyer up, force, uh, force him to, to go backwards a little bit to allow the pursuit to come up and get another uh, uh, nice uh, play and put him in third and long. Once again, Southmont finds themselves in a precarious spot here, but they've gotten themselves out of worse in this ballgame. Boyer to pass again. He's just going to hit the gas and go. Gets to the outside, at least gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll be a gain of four, but still well short of a first down. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to take the vertical routes up on the outside with a little out route underneath. And again, Danville does a pretty decent job of getting pressure uh, on Boyer. He does a nice job stepping up. He finds his escape lane, but uh, those black jerseys do a good job chasing him down, and they force uh, Southmont to punt. There for the Warriors. No, not at all. And that's the second time tonight that uh, Danville almost, or that Southmont almost had a punt block. And of course, that forced the shank off his foot. And now you've got Danville set up, uh, you know, first down at the uh, Southmont 44 yard line. Exactly the start that the Warriors wanted here for the second half. Danville had three turnovers in that first half, but they're still only down by two. Ward. Going to roll now to his left, has to unload as he is hit to the ground, and that will fall incomplete. And they tried to, to run the little the bubble to, to get the uh, Southmont defense to come up and then tried to run uh, get the receivers down the field. Unfortunately, Southmont was very disciplined, and uh, Ward does a nice job just throwing it away. Uh, that's actually a pretty good decision by the freshman quarterback. Just get rid of it, don't take a sack, and put yourself in second and ten. With how competitive that Southmont has been over the years, believe it or not, Coach, the Mounties have never won a sectional championship in their history. Oh, that's amazing. Handoff this time to Wooten. And he's able to plunge forward for a gain of five. Yeah, that's that little inside trap play that uh, Danville's had a lot of success with all night tonight, and Wooten was able to uh, come off the... Uh, no, they missed Danville, missed the block up inside. Wooten kept his feet running, and now Southmount was arm tackling there. Wooten was able to drag a couple of defenders to give themselves a manageable third down. Although Wooten doesn't regularly get the start in the backfield for Danville, he is their leading rusher on the season. Now it is Robinson in the backfield, and he will get the carry. And he goes absolutely nowhere, maybe a half a yard on the play. Yeah, you can see Southmont came up in a little run blitz. They fit every gap right there, and uh, we're able to uh, win the line of scrimmage that time. Uh, you can see right here the penetration that comes up inside. They're trying to run that little trap play again, and uh, Danville or Southmont does a nice job uh, getting a bunch of white jerseys in there and holding it to no gain. So it's fourth down and five, and it appears Danville feels they're in four-down territory. They are going to go for it here. Ward goes with the pass, looks for Tankley, and it is in and out of the hands. Excellent coverage there by Marlon Williams, and it's a big turnover on downs by the Mountie defense. Yeah, just tried to run a little, you know, fake that little quick trap play up inside and then get that glance throw uh, up the field. Unfortunately, uh, 
Southmont does a really nice job. You can see white jerseys all over the, the black jerseys in coverage right there, and it's a turnover on downs for, uh, for the Mounties. Of course, we only touched on this briefly in the first half, those black jerseys. This is the first time ever that Danville is wearing black jerseys. That's according to head coach Jamie Comer, who said that they decided to surprise the team with the black jerseys here today. Oh, kids love that when you get those special jerseys like that. That's always a great thing. Woodall, again, just going to try and keep cranking forward, dinking and dunking downfield. But again, coach, Again, they've averaged eight and a half yards per carry all season long, and they are well below that average tonight. Yeah, you know, Danville defensive line is really doing a good job. They're, they're controlling their gaps. They're not getting knocked off the football, especially when they try to run those straight dive plays. They've had a little bit more success running the little G scheme plays. Uh, you know, we might see uh, uh, Boyer fake it in here and maybe pull it out himself and run. Boyer again, going to pitch it outside this time to Howell. And he fumbles the football, and it's recovered by Danville. The first turnover of the night by the Mounties. And Danville able to capitalize in plus territory once again. Yeah, you know, we talked about, so they ran the triple option. Wood, uh, they've been doing a good job. Uh, Danville has taken Wood all away, so they go to the triple. They defend it pretty well. Boyer's got to pitch it. And again, you've got that safety run in the alley, and he gets his hand on, is able to knock the football out. And now Danville's in business here off the turnover. And we talked about that at the half. Danville had to get a turnover. They've got one. So the drive basically continues here for Danville after their previous drive stalled, going forward on fourth down. And going ahead here is Mosley for a gain of two. Yeah, got to get the Danville offensive line. has got to get rolling again here. There's that little quick trap play, but they're just not getting the push they were getting uh, late in the first quarter and, and all through the second quarter. Uh, I, I know they're going to be getting on those offensive linemen. They've got to they've got to get that push, create a new line of scrimmage. Second down and eight here for the Warriors. Ward, quick outside, has his man. At this time, it is outside to wide receiver Grayson Wilson getting his first grab, the senior tonight. Yeah, really good uh, on-time throw. Uh, you can see uh, number two, uh, just kind of the three hitch routes right along uh, along a straight line there. And uh, Ward does a nice job picking up the open receiver and gets themselves in a third and short. Now, you know, uh, it doesn't seem like Danville's got a kicker, so this is four down territory. Another completed pass. Ward has been efficient tonight. He has only incompleted four passes all night long. And now make it five as that one falls incomplete looking for Tanksley. Yeah, it looked like South Mount was in almost a straight man-to-man -man coverage right there. Did a great job. They knew that uh, it was only four yards to get a first down. Coverage was really tight, and uh, the ball was uh, broken up by Tanksley right there. Uh, maybe go to the sprint out again here on fourth down, give Ward an opportunity to either run or pass it here. Uh, we'll see what Danville dials up. The precedent was set on the previous drive. Danville is going to go for it again. Ward to the air, lobs it along the sideline looking for Collins, and it is incomplete. No, he caught it. Caught it. Oh, my goodness. How did he catch that? Touchdown, Danville. Oh, my goodness, Caden Collins. I don't know if that ball got tipped and then Collins came off of it. I thought it was incomplete. You know, it's a little, little dark over in that corner. We'll have to take a look at the replay to see what happened. We'll have to take a look at this again. Again, Ward gets it outside. It is a 50-50 ball. What a one-handed grab behind the defender by Collins. That is the best catch I think I have seen all season. And you know what? Collins ran a great route there because he got pushed to the sideline, and then he, we say he stacked. He got back over the top of the, of the defensive back and then was able to make that catch. Two-point conversion, and Wooten is able to get it in. They are one for three now on the two-point Kongs. And they have it now 18, now 20 to 14 in favor of Danville. That was something special right there. We'll take a timeout back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network as we have a flag here before we head to break. We'll check the flag first. And it looks like we also have a player down on the field in the end zone. 
So the officials are going to come over here and talk with Coach Comer. So the two-point conversion stands at the moment as it is a Southmont player down there right at the goal line. And it looks like it was after the play. The, yeah, so the two-point conversion is good, but after the play, it's a personal foul against Danville. So maybe some extracurriculars afterwards, but either way, it is going to be a penalty on the Warriors. Now we'll take a timeout here on the ISC Sports Network. Hi, I'm Jason Warner of Warner Financial. When it comes to your 401k, you deserve a partner who values your retirement dreams as much as you do. We believe that your 401k is more than just an account. It's a strategy tailored to fit your unique circumstances. Our approach isn't just about numbers. It's about understanding you. Whether you're just starting your career or counting down the days until approaching retirement, we're here to ensure your 401k aligns perfectly with your future. Ready to make your 401k work for you? Contact us today for a personalized consultation. Food, shelter, fast Wi-Fi. It's all we really need. Good thing Endeavor has the fast, reliable internet it takes to power all the Wi-Fi hungry gadgets in your home. All at once. With speeds up to 10 gig, get smooth HD streaming video, gaming, music, and surfing, all with no waiting, no buffering, no kidding. Call or click weendeavor.com and upgrade to Indiana's fastest internet today. And that was Aaron McMasters, who was the down to Southmont player on the goal line. We'll have to check on his status as we go. Welcome back on the ISC Sports Network. Dale Carlson, Kurt Darling with you, Coach. Let's take a look at that replay again. This was a heck of a grab by Caden Collins. Yeah, Caden Collins does a lot of things right here. We always talk about uh, a receiver. Once he gets pushed to the boundary like that, we say stack, which means get back up on top of the defensive back. Now, it was a great route. The ball was short, but what a great one-handed catch there by Collins. And again, you've got a freshman quarterback, right? You've got to have your other players step up and make plays. And Caden Collins so far made the play of the night. He had everybody fooled, including me right there, because it looked like he had dropped it from the far side of the field from our vantage point here up in the press box. But he makes some magic happen right there. And Danville gets the lead back for the third time tonight. That's the third lead change that we've had so far here yeah. this evening. Unfortunately, we had the personal foul, so now Danville's got to kick the ball from 25. So Southmont's got the potential to get really good field position here. It's going to be fielded here by Howell, and he's already past the 30-yard line, and he gets to the 40 before he is knocked down right there. So as you mentioned, Coach, excellent field position here for Southmont. Yeah, but who was there on the tackle again for Danville? I'm guessing it was Sean Robinson. Sean Robinson. I'll tell you what, he does a great job on special teams. So now if you're Southmont, you have that amazing catch on the second craziest play that we've seen here tonight between from Danville. If from a morale standpoint here, how do you keep your players in the game? Again, you just got to go play the next play. You're only down by six. We know we can run the football. We've just got to stick with our game plan, keep playing, play the next play. So again, Nolan Boyer going to get the handoff there to Chad. And again, he is pummeled in the backfield, which will be a tackle for loss for Danville. Yeah, I tried to run a little jet sweep, uh, trying to get uh, what all gone one way. And Danville's all over a great defensive pursuit by, uh, by the Danville uh, defensive line linebackers. So that's a loss of a yard on the play. I, mean, I am surprised that Danville's had as many tackles for losses as they had. I, that This really surprised me how well their defensive line is playing in linebackers tonight. So back again. Woodall goes right to the line. Fumble Buffalo's. again. And who Danville. comes up with it? Looks like Danville says they have it. Waiting for the official to say who actually has the ball. And it, it looks like it is, in fact, Danville football. They're still conversing, and there's the call. Danville with back-to-back -back fumble recoveries, and it is big Greg Cade with the forced fumble. What a play there by the senior. Just went with that uh, off-tackle dive play right here, and again, really good penetration. I uh, can't quite see who that was. Yeah, that looked like that might have been Stephen Webb coming over the top who actually forced it and then uh, Cade was able to get in and, and, and recover it. But either way, we again talked about Danville needs to get some turnovers. They've had two straight uh, turnovers uh, that they've been able to force against Southmont. 
Two forced fumbles tonight here in this second half by Danville. Once again, they start in plus territory. Up the gut goes Mosley, and he has a solid gain for about eight yards. There's that little quick trap play again that uh, Danville has kind of made a living off tonight. Really nice job with the kickoff block. Mosley uh, is able to run through an arm tackle and picks up eight yards. So Southmont had 169 yards at the Pat halftime. Since then, Coach, Danville has held them to just 15 yards on the ground. Well, I think that uh, at halftime, they really challenged the Danville defensive line and the linebackers to execute their technique, beat gap sound, and get their linebackers over the top to make plays, and they certainly have here in the second half. Carter Ward, he has some room. He unloads, looking to force Scrafton in the end zone. He extends, but he would have been out of bounds anyway had he made that grab, and that falls incomplete. Yeah, I think, you know, for a young quarterback, he's rolling out to his left. He didn't quite get his shoulders turned uh, to uh, uh, get that throw. It's a little bit more accuracy. And unfortunately, uh, you're right, he would have been out of bounds had he come down with that. Still a heck of an effort right there by the freshman quarterback who has been doing a solid job in relief of Connor Soper, who unfortunately went out with a broken bone in his non-throwing hand earlier this season, and so he has had to pick up the slack. And Danville is certainly looking good under his leadership as there is a big pile moving forward with Mosley underneath, and he gets the first down. I think they mark, are they marking him short? They might mark him just short. It looked like he was well, right on the pylon. Yeah, I thought the pile got pushed, uh, got pushed uh, more than that. That's... Uh, Still, it's going to be four down territory here. I thought that was a really good push by the Danville offensive line. Sure looked like he had the first down there. Fourth down and inches here for Danville. Ward is under center, and he's going to try and sneak it, but there is a whistle before the snap. And they're going to stop the, play, stop the clock here, and looks like a timeout has been called on the field. It's going to be a timeout here for Southmont. Today's game is presented to you by Werner Financial, a firm who utilizes customized investment solutions to meet your financial goals from investments and planning for retirement to partnerships in tax strategy. Werner, does, Werner Financial does it all. Call them today at 317-735-9202 to learn more about how you can secure your financial future. So Southmont. He's really been punched in the gut here coming out of this halftime period. As you see, both teams on their respective sidelines. And Danville once again threatening here on fourth down. Yeah, with uh, 3.30 to go here in the third uh, in the third quarter, though, you hate to say that this is a, a, a pivotal play in the game because there's a lot of football to be played. But if Danville can convert here, you know, potentially score, give themselves a little bit of a commanding lead. If Southmont can get a stop here, that that's be a big morale booster uh, coming off their second turnover. Again, Ward is under center. They don't sneak it this time. It's Robinson. He punches ahead for a first down and a lot more. The special teams man gets a big carry and a big first down. You know, I think that timeout played a little bit in Danville's favor right here because they're, you can see Southmont's looking for the quarterback sneak. They actually got pretty good penetration, but the off-tackle area was open, and uh, Danville was able to punch it through and, and uh, get a big first down here. Ten yards on that carry there by Robinson. And Danville is now in the red zone. Ward again, it gives it off to Mosley. He sheds a tackler, turns it upfield, gets to the 10, and that's good for another first down. Yeah, that was that little G scheme that we uh, both teams like to run where they pull that play side guard and kick out, and Woodall had a chance there. You see Woodall comes right through and just doesn't wrap up and allows Mosley to uh, get that first down, and, and now uh, Danville's first and goal at the 9. Momentum is on the Warriors' side here late in the third quarter. Ward under center again. Delayed handoff, turning it up upfield this time. Flag on the play as they get into the end zone with Andrew Smith on the carry. But we'll check the penalty. Yeah, as a little counter play with uh, Andrew Smith. Uh, Rather, that was back. Wooten, excuse I'm me. I'm sorry, Wooten coming back uh, with it. But I think we might either have a, a hold or a clip. Definitely going to go against Danville. 
So that will negate the touchdown here as Wooten, you can see, comes up a little gimpy after that play. So the officials checking oh. the penalty here and and it's going to be a chop block yeah, here chop. against Danville. So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So what was first and goal from inside the 10 is now going to be first and goal from out near the 20. That's a, that's a tough call, I think, sometimes uh, to make. Uh, it almost just looked like the Danville offensive lineman just kind of fell over and rolled into the Southmont player, but he did block him below the knees, so they're going to get that call. It's only the second penalty by my count on Danville all night long as they give it back into the hands of Mosley, who makes up at least a couple yards from that penalty yardage. Yeah, it's, it's a tough situation here. It just doesn't seem like Danville has a kicker, so they may have be forced to have to uh, you know, throw the football down in, in this situation. I'm assuming that uh, Southmont's going to be laying back, not allow uh, an opportunity for Carter to throw the ball into the end zone. They gave Mosley a yard on that play, second down at 16. Ward. Alone in the backfield, fires into the end zone, wide open in the end zone. Ethan Wooten, touchdown, Warriors. Uh, really nice play call, uh, running a, a four vertical scheme, and uh, Wooten was able to sneak right up into the middle of the field and, and get wide open there for a, an easy pitching catch for a touchdown. You know, off the play action, uh, or the motion, really nice play designed by uh, Danville uh, to get... Uh, up in the end zone, and uh, again, two turnovers, two touchdowns. Danville's got a commanding lead here so far going into the end of the second uh, or the third quarter. Looked like it was just a missed assignment in the backfield, Coach. Well, I think when they had the motion coming across, I think they got messed up in who was going to cover who, and then fortunately for Southmont, left the player wide open. Looking for the two-point conversion. Ward tries to hit the pylon, and he does, getting the corner. And Danville gets another two-point conversion to make it a 28-14 contest. Yeah, Sofman actually took away all the receivers. Their coverage was, was excellent. Unfortunately, uh, as, they, uh, as Carter Ward sprinted out to the right, everybody trailed the sprint out. Nobody contained on the backside, and Ward was able to beat the Southmont defender to the end zone. That drive of Danville brought to you by Endeavor Communications, which is proud to be a part of this local event and wish all the athletes good luck during this competition. Together with our members, Endeavor Communications is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and services we offer, visit weendeavor.com. Let's take a look at this once again. So you can see um, the motion and just somewhere in the backfield, they got confused. There's two players uh, covering one player and uh, that left up the open touchdown. Right here, you can see all the white jerseys are chasing Carter Ward on the sprint out and uh, he's able to see the back door and get out and get the two point conversion. Carter Ward, a five foot 11, 165 pound freshman thrust into the starting role with Connor Soper going down. Coach Comer said that he could possibly be in the discussion of being all-state quarterback by the time he's a senior. He's certainly showing a lot of potential here in this ballgame. He keeps playing like this. They may have to talk about him being an all-stater next year. He's really done a nice job tonight. And you know the thing is, the key is he threw that interception, and he just keeps coming back, and he's playing. He's got a short memory, and he just keeps playing football. But now Southmont has a tall task here of trying to get back at this one as McCandless will bring it back up to midfield and he's tackled right at the 25 yard line. You know our, our, our boy Sean Robinson, uh, or our man Sean Robinson didn't make the, uh, didn't make the play that time uh, but he forced it back up inside for his buddies to get there again. Great, cut, great kick cover Sean Robinson is. He's, he's definitely a, a force on special teams. 178 yards through the air for three touchdowns tonight for Carter Ward. Yeah, just playing extremely well. What a what an excellent uh, 
uh, uh, quarterback play that he's done tonight. And again, to be able to come back after that interception as a freshman and just keep playing, he's doing a wonderful job so far tonight. Well, if you're Southmont, you've run the ball tonight, but Danville has been able to neutralize that for the most part here in this second half. And they also have not been able to get much of a passing offense going as well as Nolan Boyer is able to scratch out maybe a yard or two on the play. Yeah, they tried to uh, they tried to run the uh, uh, little counter fake here right now out of the gun, uh, and Boyer went outside, but uh, Danville's all over it. And I think uh, Southmont's trying to give uh, Danville a little bit different look. That's the first time they've run the ball out of the shotgun tonight. And they just don't do that very often, uh, but they didn't execute very well on that uh, first down play. Southmont has 187 yards on the ground tonight. This is a team that averages 285 a night. Here's Woodall. He tries to punch a hole there in the middle, and he's able to fall forward for a couple. Uh, again, uh, all those black jerseys all around Woodall right there, just not allowing him to get that head of steam going forward to pick up those uh, big yards that uh, he's done consistently throughout the season. They give him three, and clock is ticking inside of a minute here at towards the end of the third quarter, which has been utterly dominated by Danville here over the last 12 minutes. Third down and five here for Boyer. Fakes the handoff, has his man in stride. That is Chad. He keeps moving across midfield and down across the 45-yard line where he's tackled. Yeah, it's a good play call right there. Uh, out of the shotgun, fake the dive play to Boyer, and then just pick up uh, Chad on the uh, the quick look in. And, of course, you know, is, uh, Danville's defense is going to step up. They've got to stop the run, and uh, they did. Chad got right behind him, and that's a big play. Southmont really needed that. Uh, get some momentum here down 14. 25 yards on that pass will bring us to the end of quarter number three. Stick with us. 12 more foot uh, action, 12 more minutes of football to play here on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby proof their two bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau insurance and stop knocking on wood. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing and surfing and fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. Fourth and final quarter here on homecoming night for Danville. Here on the ISC Sports Network, the Warriors have scored 14 unanswered points on the Mounties of Southmont to take a 28 to 14 lead. Alongside Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, it's winning time here for one of these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, this is a pivotal drive for Southmont. They've really got to come away with some points. They've been able to move. They just completed a 25-yard pass as Woodall gets hit initially, but then on a second effort is able to scratch out a couple yards. Yeah, Southmont's uh, trying to run the football out of the gun here, trying to... to uh, from a formation standpoint, uh, uh, play with their tendencies right now and, and put Danville in a little bit of a quandary. Are they going to run or are they going to pass You know, out of the shotgun? So far, uh, uh, they've, they've put four or five runs here now out of the shotgun here in the second half. So Southmont has not had a run for more than 10 yards since late in the second quarter. Yeah, Danville defense is really doing a nice job. Going back to the air again is Boyer. He's feeling the pressure in stride. He tries to get it to his receiver, and that falls incomplete. That yeah. was Marlon Williams trying to get it. Yeah, Stephen Webb uh, came from his middle linebacker spot. Nobody blocked him, came untouched, and uh, uh, Boyer did a nice job getting outside, but just had to throw it away. And again, now we're looking at uh, third nine. Now we, we're pretty sure this has got to be four down territory uh, for, South, for Southmont here, down 28-14. Uh, 
I know there's a lot of time to go, but, but they desperately need a score on this drive with the way Danville's been moving the ball. Big third down here for the Mounties. Boyer with some time, but it goes away quickly, and nobody home as that went way out of bounds and away from both receivers. Looked like it was Williams as well as McMasters going in opposite directions, and it goes incomplete. Uh, Danville's not being uh, uh, bashful about bringing some pressure here now against uh, Boyer, and, and again, he's truly not a drop-back passer. He's more of a sprint-out, play-action type passer, and so he's trying to take advantage of uh, maybe the inexperience on the Southmont uh, offensive line in terms of pass protection, and they're just bringing 5-6. I think they might have brought uh, 7 on that last one. As you mentioned, Coach, 4 down territory for Southmont. Boyer has to get rid of it. Down the middle he go, and McMasters, as well as Williams, just caught up in some stifling coverage there by Danville, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, and again, you can see uh, there's a couple of black jerseys that, that were able to uh, uh, put pretty good pass rush moves on, defeat the uh, Southmount offensive line, get pressure, and just force Boyer to have to just throw the ball uh, away there on fourth down. So again, another big stop by the Danville uh, defense, uh, giving them a chance potentially to chew some clock up here, get the ball, get another score, and really take command of the game. 28 to 14. That is what Danville, or rather Southmont, lost to North Montgomery as far as a score is concerned earlier this year. Here is Ward looking for Scrafton. He is wide open and is tackled inside the 30-yard line. Jace Scrafton is having a heck of a night catching the ball. Yeah, I tell you what, Ward and Scrafton are, are, are really doing a great job uh, connecting. There's the double move. Scrafton did the double move, and uh, Ward put the ball out there. You know, this is a long throw by Ward across the field for a fresh. Ball right on the money. Uh, they ran a little bubble and just put the, the vertical route in behind it. Corner stepped up on the bubble, and uh, Ward was able to get the throw on the sideline before the safety could get there. Again, two impressive throws back-to-back -back by the true freshman. 20 yards on that play. He has now thrown the ball twice on the last two drives for 58 yards. Just amazing. Having a great night playing quarterback. And now with Mosley in the backfield. That's who they give it to. He goes up the middle, and he keeps on pushing, and he's going to be just shy, but a solid gain of about four yards. Yeah, again, just get behind that big offensive line of Danville's and just get that big push. Uh, and Mosley just keeps his feet running right in there. Uh, you can see uh, just a almost a wedge type of play, straight dive play. And again, Mosley, shoulder pads down, almost gets in. Carter Ward had 225 yards passing coming into the night. He has since doubled that up here tonight. Ward under center. Here's Robinson. Punches it in. Another touchdown for Danville. Again, get behind that big offensive line. Just get the push. Uh, walks in the end zone pretty much untouched. And then Danville's really... for two. That's a back-breaking touchdown given up right there by Southmont, who led at the half, and now going for the two-point conversion, Wooten gets it in for the second time tonight. That makes it 21 unanswered points by Danville Boy, here in the second half. Everything is going Danville's way, because that pitch was, looked like it was a little bit behind him, but he was able to corral it and get the two points. 
Tonight's game is brought to you by Ertl and Company, which is locally owned health insurance and a broker, and we ponder, po a partner with Indiana businesses to control medical insurance costs. Our physician-led medical team travels directly to your business with the mission of delivering preventative care, chronic disease management, and weight management. Contact Ertl and Company today at 317-577-2777 or for a free consultation so we can get started now helping your group save money and increase profits. Danville to go here in the in the uh, fourth quarter. Of course, if you heard on the sound from the student section here at Danville chanting about Carter Ward saying he is a freshman. Yeah, he definitely is, but he is certainly playing beyond his years tonight. Yeah, didn't he didn't he win a freshman homecoming award or something here too? I mean, I think he's having a big night, isn't he? He certainly is. It's impressive, though, to see a freshman quarterback when you think he got his first start last week against Tri-West, and now he's up against a 4 and didn't play that badly, even though they lost, and now against a 4-1 Southmont team, and he's having a career night for a short career. And now it looks like we have a timeout called by Danville. That is their first timeout of the second half here. Must not have liked something about how they were lining up or something. Either way, that's a... Unusual time to call a timeout here right before a kickoff. I think they were sh either short somebody or they had 12 out there. I'm not quite sure, but a uh, little uh, special teams mishap there on the sideline. Didn't quite get the uh, right personnel in, uh, so they had to burn a timeout. But at least if you're going to burn one, it's nice to do that when you're up 36-14. Jamie Comer trying to keep this Danville program moving forward after he got off to a heck of a start only losing three games in his first two seasons. In fact, in his very first seasons, season during the 2020 COVID year, they went all the way to the state finals where they unfortunately ran right into the Bishop Shatar juggernaut in Class 3A. But still, it was a heck of a season to start things off in his tenure here at Danville. And, you know, Coach Comer's a winner, came from a winning program, and, and he knows how to win. He's done a great job both getting the numbers and the quality of play up here at uh, Danville High School. So now with the correct personnel in, Danville kicks it back here into the hands of Southmont. This is McCandless. And he gets absolutely rocked right there by Stephen Webb this time, making the special teams play just this side of the 20-yard line. Yeah, Stephen Webb, the starting middle linebacker, again out there playing special teams, doing a little double duty. It gets down the field and, and makes that play uh, for uh, for Danville. And uh, Sophomore's going to have a ways to go here. They've, they've got a lot of work here. They need to have a quick score or uh, this, this game could really be uh, uh, heading uh, Danville's way. Last time Southmont scored, it was midway through the second quarter after they had recovered a muffed punt, which was the second of the night. And that resulted in a Woodall one-yard run for a touchdown. Since then, it has been all Danville. Back to the air. The third completed pass tonight for Southmont goes into the hands of McCandless, and he's ahead for about seven yards. I mean, you know, that's one of the first real, uh, first or few positive plays that uh, Southmont has had here. They go with a quick wide receiver screen, gave the look over to uh, Woodall uh, going opposite way. was a key tackle made right here. And now we've got uh, Southmont going tempo here as soon as the sticks get set up. You got, you got that hometown stick team uh, over there, so they're not moving that fast. Eli X-Line with the touchdown saving tackle there as on the sweep this time for Southmont. That is Nolan Boyer getting it to the outside himself for a gain of a couple yards. Yeah, yeah, Southmont was trying to catch Danville uh, uh, 
kind of napping with that tempo play and the sticks were a little late getting set up and allowed Danville to get set up and uh, they were able to pursue and uh, uh, play that jet sweep for only a two yard gain. Southmont trying to avoid their second loss of the season here this evening. And a flag on the play. There was movement on the line before the ball was snapped. And I believe this may be going against Danville. Yeah, it looked like uh, one of the Danville uh, defensive linemen tried to time the snap there and just didn't quite get it. Maybe Greg Cade there was the one who got some initial movement there. He comes out of the ball game, and that will give Southmont a free five yards here on second down. Yeah, it's usually a pretty good indication when he comes trotting off the field that that was uh, the person who was guilty of the foul. So that puts Southmont into plus territory here. Ball at the 49. Boyer has some time. Darts it to the outside. Complete to his receiver that time again. It is McCandless with three catches in a row here for Southmont. Yeah, McCandless seems to be the man Boyer wants to connect with here. Uh, pretty good pass protection this time, even though uh, Danville's running a little bit of a blitz and uh, uh, they find uh, an opening in the zone, get a first down, and go tempo again. 14 yards on the carry, on the catch rather. Boyer nearly gets a, nearly gets that ball swatted out of his hands there. He is sacked. Just a little trying to go with a little sprint out pass to the left. And uh, again, we've got all sorts of black jerseys coming in uh, for uh, Danville. That time it was uh, Krager who was able to get that sack and put uh, Southmont in the second and very long. That's his second sack of the season right there. Again, just a really nice job by Danville defensive front, just getting penetration every time Southmont tries to, to go back and throw the football. That's a loss of 10 yards. Southmont again playing catch up. As Boyer couldn't quite get it to Howell there, bringing up third down. Yeah, I mean, Danville's not being bashful. They're bringing, they're bringing pressure, playing man coverage behind, and uh, doing a great job forcing Boyer to just, you know, throw the football before he wants to. And now, you know, it's difficult. Uh, you know, we talk about the ability of Southmont to rush the football and, you know, those things we said earlier in the game, but you can kind of see the momentum has switched to, uh, to Danville, and Southmont guys, you know, their body language are just not quite looking as confident as they were in the first quarter of tonight's game. Third down and a mile here for Southmont. Boyer, again, evading the pressure. Gets to the outside, and he's just going to take it himself, and he has a big 15-yard pickup there to get back inside the 30 and that coach may make it four down territory here for Southmont. Oh, absolutely, it's gonna be four down territory. And again, Danville does a nice job. They're only rushing four, but they get pressure. But Boyer's such a good athlete, and he's able to elude a couple of arm tackles, uh, set somebody up, make a miss, and, and now at least Southmont's got an opportunity here to get a first down and maybe get a score to, to uh, give themselves, you know, who knows if they can score here an onside kick, something to get themselves back into the game. That is Southmont's longest run of the game since an 18-yard scamper earlier on in the second quarter. Here's Woodall. On fourth down, he gets close, but maybe is just shy by about a yard. And the Danville defense again delivers a turnover on down. Yeah, they tried to run a little trap play uh, to Woodall right there. I mean, he's their money man. And uh, again, you see... Uh, uh, a lot of black jerseys around there making plays. Uh, Danville's just done a great job here the second half getting off of blocks. And, and they're doing a much better job tackling than what they were doing early in the game, especially the first quarter. So now it's first down and 10 here for Danville. As this is the drive where they can put the Mounties away here for good here this evening. On the carry up the gut this time is Mosley. Yeah, good penetration by uh, the Southmont uh, defensive line. Trying to run that little uh, quick trap play that they've had success with uh, all night long, and Southmont does a nice job rallying to make the play. By my unofficial count here, Coach, 236 yards, three passing touchdowns tonight for Carter Ward. Yeah, Carter Ward's just having a great night for a freshman. His second start and, and against a very good football team. 
A new season high for, or a new career high for him as well as Robinson gets the carry. You know, again, uh, we like to see the Danville offensive line kind of take over right here. You know, it's not, we say the four minute offense, last four minutes of the game, but uh, it sure would be nice for Danville to be able to just run this clock all the way out. But uh, Southmont defense is putting up a fight here. They're not, they're not going, they're not going to go home uh, uh, easily. And, uh, you know, it's a big third down here. Uh, Southmont needs to stop. The winner of this game takes over second place in the Sagamore Conference. So far, Danville looks poised to take that as Ward fumbles the snap for the third time tonight, and he's going to get flattened there by Aiden Dickerson, who will get his second sack of the season. Yeah, it looked like the snap was just a little bit low, and, uh, you know, that's the situation. It looked like Carter almost had a thought of trying to throw that one up, but in a situation like this where it's 36-14, if the bad snap was ever fault it is just get on it punt the football away keep the clock running and uh, you know hopefully uh, the Danville defense can come up with another stop the three and out on that play here by the Southmont defense that is a certainly a big one to at least give Southmont a little bit of a chance as the fair catch will be taken by McCandless at the 43 yard line While we have a moment, Endeavor Communications is proud to be part of this local event and wish all athletes good luck during this competition. Together, our members at Endeavor Communications are committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and services we offer, visit weendeavor.com. So if you're Southmont, this is ideally your last chance to get something going here. Yeah, this is do or die. I mean, they've got to score, got to score quickly. And, and here then... is Woodall certainly taking that to heart right there, Coach. He picks up nine. Sure, but if I'm if I'm uh, Danville right now, I'm going to play uh, my coverage loose. Uh, if we have to give up some runs, we're going to give up some runs, but we want that clock to continue to run uh, with the big lead that we have. Here's Boyer. Gets away from the pass rush. He'll pick up the first down and run out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, it's a nice play by uh, by Boyer seeing that opening to get up the sideline. Not only did he get the first down, he picked up a pretty good chunk of yards. And he stopped the clock because uh, the clock is not in Southmont's favor here as we uh, get uh, under five minutes. It's a gain of five on the play. Southmont is able to at least catch their breath here as the clock remains stationary. And it's a big first down picked up there by Boyer. Boyer, again, dumps it off to Woodall. He has his first catch and has some running room along the sideline. He will slide as he picks up the first down. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good defensive play. I, I think that was... Uh... Uh, Steven Webb uh, from the middle linebacker spot was all over it, but just wasn't able to finish with the, with the tackle. And uh, uh, he may Woodall have lost was able his, to get a big play. He may have lost his footing there instead of sliding. I think he did. And now we have a timeout called on the field here. Looks like it's going to be Danville taking yet another one. Yeah, I think they're trying to just regroup here. You know, they gave away uh, the big play by Boyer that got the first down and then that screen play. Uh, I think coach is just reminding them that we've got to finish uh, tackling, we've got to finish plays, and we've got to make sure we've got 11 jerseys pursuing to the football. 237 yards rushing tonight for Southmont. Yeah, so their rushing numbers aren't you know, about where, usually where they are for a, for a ball game. It's just that They've had the two turnovers that have hurt them, and the fact that uh, you know their their uh, Danville offense has just been cranking it up, and you know Carter Ward, we say this, he's having a career night. It's only his second game. I will say this, Coach. We have seen Southmont throw it a lot more than they usually do this season. Yeah, and and, and they've been kind of forced to do that, you know, as, as the score has gotten out of hand, and the fact that the Danville defense really stepped up there right in the middle of the game, uh, second quarter, third quarter and shut their running game down. So out of the timeout, pitch outside. 
This is Howell who is able to make something out of nothing. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe falls forward for a yard on the play. Yeah, great again, great pursuit uh, by the Danville defense. You can see there was four black jerseys, five black jerseys around the ball carrier right there. Again, held him to a short gain, kept him inbounds, clock still running. And Boyer will just go right up the gut with it this time. And he's tackled by Trey Ross. Yeah, kind of faked a little toss play out there to get the Danville uh, defense to run. And then he just put his foot in the ground and went straight ahead. Uh, but again, he didn't get the first down. The clock's still running. It's all in Danville's favor. Inside of four minutes here in this ball game, Howell takes it to the outside on the bubble screen. And he is wrestled to the ground by a handful of Danville players. Yeah, it's uh, again a little quick bubble screen out to the outside, but uh, Danville does a nice job uh, in uh, defending that, not giving up the uh, the block on the outside. And and again, Danville's able to rally with uh, three defenders there to make a tackle. Gain of a few yards, and it's a first down. Boyer looking outside, and it's going to be a flag and what I can presume to be pass interference here coming up on Danville. Yeah, I think that is, you know, that was actually a great break by the uh, by um, Chance De Denton right there, uh, breaking on that out route, but unfortunately he made some contact there a little early, gonna get a pass interference call and give him a first down. Trying to get it to Kale Chad right there. Again, it's a spot foul, which will give them a first down. You know, you like to see your safety make a break like that on the out route, and then, you know, unfortunately, he just got there a little uh, little early. That's one of those penalties, you know, that you, you look and say, you know, you made, a, you made a great break, you read it. It's one of those things that happens. That, that's not one you're going to get on him in a video review uh, tomorrow morning. So it's going to be first down and goal to go from right inside the 10-yard line for Southmont. Again, they have not scored since late in the second quarter. Held scoreless in the third. And now we have, again, Woodall and Boyer. Boyer looking towards the end zone and just out of the reach of Kyler McCandless. I just tried to run a slant route there to McCandless, and that was good coverage by... Uh, by Danville, throw was a little bit high. He'd like to see a throw down just a little bit, give uh, McCandless a chance to catch it. Uh, but I, I guess with the penalty, since it was a spot foul, it wasn't enough to move the sticks for the first down. So it's second and uh, one here, it looks like. Danville has scored 24 unanswered points in this ball game since the start of the second half. Southmont trying to break that streak here as Woodall punches through, gets into the end zone, and it's a big touchdown there for the Mounties. Again, just a little quick give to, to Woodall. That's That's been their bread and butter play, you know, for most of the season. Danville's done a nice job in terms of stopping that. You know, since about the, the beginning of the second quarter, they, they've, they've really shut Woodall down, uh, but he's able to get the score there, and I would anticipate we're going to see, uh, after the extra point here, we're going to see a, an onside kick attempt because uh, Southmont's got to get the ball back. Here's Petrosky on for the PAT. And again, he puts it through the uprights and good. So it's certainly an interesting thing now here, Coach. As you expect, we could probably see an onside kick here from Southmont. Yeah, you would expect to see that right now. So uh, Danville's got to get their hands team, all their the good hands people out there to uh, be able to uh, to take that onside kick and uh, you know make a play with that uh, you know coming up here so they don't give the ball back to Southmont. Again, Danville. That's the first touchdown they've given up since late in the second quarter. And there's a lot riding on this game here for both of these teams here as we take a look again at Woodall just barreling over the defender to get into the end zone. Yeah, Woodall's able to show his power right there and uh, you know just lowers his shoulder pads in there. And then again, you hate to see the Danville defenders kind of stand straight up and down and just take it in his chest. you got to try and get down. And I, I know it's not a pleasant thing to go and tackle a strong running back like Woodall in the legs, but uh, if, if you don't try and go down and and get underneath him, he's just going to drive you into the end zone as he did right there. And believe it or not, Coach, we haven't been able to really talk about Wyatt Woodall an awful lot tonight. Even though he has been a factor in this game, you expect him to have a little bit more of an impact, but he's been held mostly in check tonight, but 
He's getting a lot of attention from the many area small schools, namely Marion, who has really been recruiting him hard to play for them next year. Yeah, and he's a very, very good football player, and, and there's no doubt he's got the skills to play uh, college football at the, at the next level. Um, you know, whether it's as a running back or, or a linebacker, I would assume that, that there's going to be a you know, really good look uh, at him. And you can see now we're lining up in an onside kick formation, and uh, Danville's got their hands team out there uh, going to try and make a play on this football. So here we go. An onside kick likely coming here from Southmont. Their last-ditch effort to get the ball back with 3 minutes 34 to go. So Petrosky... Puts that one way far out in front of them, and that will easily be recovered by Danville. Yeah, you'd like to see that ball take a couple of spins and a bounce as opposed to just skidding across the uh, uh, across the turf into that second line. If it gets to the second line, you virtually have no chance uh, to recover it uh, with your kick team. So Danville takes over at the 42-yard line here with 3.32 to go. And, and now, Coach, I would assume that uh, you... Uh, are uh, pretty sparse with the pass here if you're Danville at this point. Yeah, you're going to run the football, and I'm sure they challenge the offensive line to take control of this game for the last three and a half minutes. And that's exactly what they do here with Mosley. He powers forward for a gain of a couple yards on the play. That's that little G play, pulling the play side guard to get kick, to kick out and let Mosley kind of come up underneath him. But again, Southmont's doing a great job defensively. They're still fighting here. They're not, they're not going to go away without a... Without a fight, they're not going to just let Danville march down the field and, and run the clock out. Uh, they're still playing hard. And Southmont calls their second timeout here of the half. Yeah, they really have no choice. I mean, their clock is not in their favor. They've got to they've got to call some timeouts here and and uh, uh, hopefully give themselves a chance to get the ball back. Back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network. Looking to keep your home comfortable year round? Look no further than Masters Heating and Cooling. Right now, you can save up to $2,599 on new system installations with zero down and up to 72 months financing. That's unbeatable value and unbeatable comfort. And if you're just looking to maintain your current home comfort system, we've got you covered with a $69 tune-up from Masters. Don't miss out. Both offers expire April 30th. Contact Masters Heating and Cooling today and experience the ultimate in home comfort. It's been an absolutely beautiful night here in Danville. Homecoming night for the Warriors here on the ISC Sports Network. Dale Carlson, Kirk Darling with you as Danville looks to put the icing on the cake here in this one. And they push forward on the ground once again with Mosley. Yeah, again, just running that straight uh, dive play, just trying to get a uh, great push by those big offensive linemen with... Uh, uh, Southmont only have one timeout left. I'm assuming that if they are able to hold Danville here, they'll waste that last timeout uh, to give themselves a chance to have some clock to move the football. Southmont only has one timeout remaining. Again, the handoff on the ground, and it's a first down here for Sean Robinson. Yeah, it's a big first down for uh, Danville. Uh, keep possession of the ball with Southmont only having one more timeout. Uh, you think that uh, this game is going to quickly be, be history tonight. So looking ahead here for both of these teams, Danville going to be heading on the road next week as they'll take on the Frankfurt Hot Dogs in another Sagamore Conference matchup up that way. Kickoff for that game at 7 o'clock. As Ward will again hand the ball off to his running back, and he is immediately met in the backfield, but still falls forward for a gain of a couple yards. That's Mosley again. Yeah, he's ran the quick trap play, and Southmont was able to get pretty good penetration on that. Uh, Mosley was still able, though, to run through the tackles and pick up some positive yards. But Southmont has used their last timeout. Uh, I don't think uh, they can just take a knee right here. I believe they're going to have to get another first down in order to do that. So the final timeout taken here by Southmont, who will be returning home next week while they will be taking on Western Boone. That will be a tough opponent to take on here, especially after the game they've had here this evening. And, you know, we've mentioned it, Coach, here 
Southmont is one of those teams that does really well early on in their season. In fact, over the last three seasons, when you account for just the five games over the last three seasons, including this year, they are 14 and one. But when it comes to their final four games of the season over the last two years, they've only won one game in that regard. Yeah, and that's uh, that, that's kind of a rough thing. That's one of those things from the coaching staff, you gotta figure a way to turn that one around. Pitch in stride this time to Wooten. And he tries to fall inbounds, and that is exactly what he does right there to get a gain of about five yards on the play. Yeah, very good play by Wooten not to go out of bounds right there. You know, as a running back, you're still thinking, well, I want to get yards, I want to get yards, but uh, that's a great uh, self-awareness of the situation. Stay in bounds, they're out of timeouts, keep the clock running, and really Danville's got two opportunities here, you know, to get, the, to get a first down. Danville now third down and short. Again, they can get a couple more first downs here and put this game away. And Sean Robinson met in the backfield immediately for a tackle for loss to bring up fourth down. And talking about that stat about Southmont really not having the best of luck in the latter half of their seasons, keep in mind who they have on their schedule for the last part of their season. Danville, Western Boone, Lebanon, Tri-West. Four of the top four teams in the conference for your last four games. Yeah, and that, that's rough, but you know, if you're going to win a championship, if you're going to be that type of team, you've got to find a way to win those games, and uh, you know, unfortunately, they haven't been able to do it, but maybe they'll be able to regroup after this and find a way to win next week. Meanwhile, Danville going to improve to four and two on the year as they put a stamp on this one. Touchdown pass number four this evening for Danville on the reception. Cole Miller the junior wide receiver coming in here late to get his first touchdown of the season. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, again, fake that little inside uh, dive play and just throw that little quick, call that a pop pass to the tight end. He just runs up the seam, everybody steps up, tight end's wide open, and he's able to scamper in for a, for a touchdown. Uh, again, what, what a stamp for, uh, for our, our freshman quarterback, Carter Ward, to put on his second start, his first win as a high school quarterback, uh, he's able to throw his fourth touchdown pass of the evening. That puts him well over 250 yards passing this evening. And they will decide it to take a knee right there on the attempted two point conversion to keep it 42 to 21. Yeah, it's kind of a classy thing by the Danville coaching staff. And you know that that's always one of those things. You know, they threw a pass there. Uh, uh, they're already up by 15 points. They threw a pass. They got to score late. But, you know, you're competing. You're trying to get a first down. You don't want to give the football back to them. And uh, so they were able to, you know, fake the dive, hit the pop pass. And, unfor you know, unfortunately for Southmont, it went in for a, for a touchdown. But hey, I think they did the classy thing by taking a knee and not going for the two there. And, you know, now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, the clock running out and Danville getting a big win tonight. There is Carter Ward getting a much-deserved squirt of water. Again, well north of 250 yards passing. Four touchdown passes tonight from that young man. Needless to say, his future is very bright for this Danville squad. No, absolutely, and I think it's going to be bright because of, of the other things that Danville has going in their program, the great, great weight training program, the fact that they're able to continue to have quality linemen in front of him, good running backs. Uh, you know, and, and, and he's shown some ability to run with the football, too. So I think as he gets a little bigger and stronger, you know, he could end up being a dual threat type player as well. And he has a lot of talent that he can certainly try and work with next year. One in particular, Jace Scrapton, only a junior wide receiver. He has done the bulk of the pass catching tonight. In support of Carter Ward. Yeah, Scrafton's had a great night, and what a, what a great target to have a 6'6 wide receiver out there. Big kickoff right there from Danville as McCandless has to back up to go get it. And he gets that one back to the 20-yard line. Again, great kick coverage by the Danville team, and they've been pretty impressive on special teams. Almost blocked a couple of, even without the muffs, almost blocked a couple of punts. Uh, were close uh, on a couple of extra point attempts uh, to, get in a, to get in a block. Uh, they've really, Coach Comer's done a really good job coaching all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. 
conference implications tonight here with this one. Again, depending on how Tri-West fared this evening, just up the road. Danville will improve to at least second place out right here in the Sagamore Conference. In fact, just in now, Tri-West beats Lebanon 28-21. to So that will move Tri-West to 4-0 and in conference play, while Danville will improve to 3-1 but keeping just as much pace with them. The problem for Danville, though, they've already played Tri-West, so they have to hope the Bruins slip up to have a chance at winning a conference championship yeah, this year. Yeah, and you're looking at the, at the who's left for Tri-West. I mean, they've already beat Lebanon. They've beat Danville. They, they obviously have Southmont to come up, but it's going to be a tall order for Southmont to, uh, to get a win against Tri-West. Danville has Frankfurt, Weibo, and North Montgomery to for the last three weeks of the season as Danville comes away with it. A huge second half from the Warriors gives Danville the victory 42 to 21 here in Sagamore Conference play. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we will, our, we will award our Masters Heating and Cooling Player of the Game back in a moment on the ISC Sports Network. Irritated by your internet provider? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with E-Force High Speed Internet. Download speed? No problem. Download an HD movie in seconds with our remarkable gigabit speed. Endeavor not only provides the latest fiber optic technology, we're also here to help you use it. We also provide television, wireless security, and telephone services with outstanding local support. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's game time at your Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Plainfield. Save thousands during Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days. Get a new Jeep Compass. Lease it. Just $2.99 a month. A new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Lease it. Just $3.59 a month. Or score a new Ram 1500. Lease it. Just $3.49 a month. Start your deal at YorkCDJRofPlainfield.com. We're not number one. You are. You're number one at York. We've gone final here in Danville. A victory for the Warriors tonight on homecoming. Welcome into the postgame show brought to you by Ertl and Company Benefit Solutions. Find out more at ErtlandCompany.com. And also by Masters Heating and Cooling. Masters gets there faster. Log on to MastersHeatCool.com for more information. Alongside Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, you see how proud Coach Comer is addressing his team right there. A heck of a comeback to considering the position they were in going into halftime. Yeah, you know, when you when you figure that uh, they gave up those two touchdowns, or one of the touchdowns with them with the muff punt, they obviously had a, had a hold on one of them, uh, but they also had a turnover that turn, uh, turned into a touchdown. You know, that was that was a rough start for them in the second half, or in the first half, and it, it looked like Southmont's game, you know, running Woodall, running Boyer, was, was going to be the way that Southmont was going to control and win this game, but second half was a totally different story. Just a quick recap of some stats here. At 85 yards passing for Southmont tonight, 247 yards on the ground. Danville also had about 110 yards on the ground as well, as well as over 250 passing yards from Carter Ward. And still, needless to say here, Coach, big win now as they move forward to take on Frankfurt in a week's time. But as they celebrate, they're going to be rallying around Carter Ward, who is our Masters Heating and Cooling Player of the Game. Masters Heating and Cooling that congratulates Carter Ward tonight, Masters Player of the Game. Masters makes your only call all of your heating and cooling needs efficient because Masters gets there faster. Call 866-824-HEAT or log on to MastersHeatCool.com when you need them. Coach, just a couple of the big plays that Carter Ward has made yeah, this I mean, evening. Carter Ward was just tremendous. And, and I said this during the broadcast, you know, for a freshman quarterback in his second start, yeah, the interception he threw was was really a bad decision from a quarterback perspective. But he just came back and played football. And even right there in that two-point conversion, nothing was open, made a great decision, was able to circle the defense back for the two-point. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, play tonight by Carter Ward. He's going to be a really special player as he grows into this role as quarterback for the Danville Warriors. 
By my official count here tonight, he finishes the evening with 268 passing yards and a career-high four touchdown passes. Congratulations to Carter Ward, who will be leading this team for the remainder of the season going in to the latter half. Coach, it's been a pleasure to work with you tonight, my friend. Always, Kurt. It's always great to call games with you, and we have uh, we had a good one tonight, even though it got away here at the end for Danville, but uh, uh, always a pleasure to work with a pro like you. Special thanks to Greg Mash and John Chapman, our on-site engineers and a cameraman, as well as Amy Harvey, providing assistance tonight for our ISC Sports Network crew. Final score once again here from Danville, 42-21. to 21. The Warriors win out homecoming. I'm Kurt Darling saying so long till next time here on the ISC Sports Network.